and turn off my I guess we're live Ron that's what I'm being told it says live it does say live I feel alive I, I, I feel alive I feel uh, uh, okay might not be alive after that breakfast <laughs> I'm I'm trying to uh, oh there we go okay pull up on my iPad my my YouTube stream now I got it oh man I hear that thunder did you get that storm last night I slept through it if I did oh man I didn't plan on being awake last night but I wound up being awake uh Let's see. So, Secret Wars 1. I don't know if Drew will be coming in or not. I didn't hear back from him yet, but if he, I sent him an invite. If he wants to pop in, we'll, we'll bring him in. Yeah, he works so, bad hours. Yeah, I know it. Uh, there's that rumbling thunder. Nice. Well... If we service. happen to if we happen to get a lot of lightning and stuff, it, it might shut the stream down, but I hope it doesn't. Um, let's see. No comments yet. Let's see. Do I got the right thing on? It's been a while since I've been in here. Yeah, it's um, working. So what you drawn? Well, you actually, um, actually, you're right. I'm gonna be tightening up some of the pencils. This is the photocopy that I, you can barely see pencils here. I used a hard lead to trace off. I had to do it in three, three sections to make it fit. So this was like the middle section, the top section, and the bottom section, which I've been chipping away at here. So let me put these pieces away. This is the recreation part that I've like finished inking. I still have, as you can see, some. I have some pencil areas that are. Hey Lloyd. Hey uh, Joe. And hey Ag. There we go. So yeah. Uh, this is the bottom part, and this is what I've been. So I basically traced everything over, um, not tightly, but just enough to get the the shapes. And as I was telling you, I, I used a harder lead, and then I uh, wanted a softer lead to go back and tighten up the pencils before going right into inks, just to give myself a a little bit more detail. So you can barely see this. So today I'm going to tighten up some pencils. And that was the HB, you said? The HB was for the overall tracing, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. uh, just to get a light line down and position of all the characters. Um, and then I, I, I was looking for a B lead, as you know, to work with. And I ran around like... I didn't have any or so I thought and I, I, I had to settle for some two B's which are a little bit soft started with those and then lo and behold I found my B leads so I got those and then when I started to want to ink some of it as you know I didn't have any 102 nibs so <laughs> it became this crazy really you know scavenger I, hunt yeah I I Unfortunately, time got wasted finding tools to use to recreate this. And I, you know, I, I, uh, okay. Drew's, uh, making breakfast for his kids and he'll jump in after that. A lot of breakfast going on this morning. All right. I gave him a like on that. Maybe, uh, maybe you can reply to him. And we're also on uh, Facebook. So uh, hello to all the Facebook people out there. Um, anyway, let me, so my train of thought was, um, 
as you know, I, there's been a lot of stuff happening here at the Beatty household, both personal and nothing like extreme, just things that uh, uh, get in the way of productivity. And I've been trying to work around those and it's almost been uh, impossible. Just like, uh, when was it? Uh, day before yesterday, I, Thursday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Bella and I run to get some groceries on the way home. Boom. I run over something, get a flat tire. Three hours later, I'm back home, exhausted from just sitting and waiting for the tow truck, going, getting a tire put on, then getting home and not, uh, not the way I wanted to spend Tuesday. It was just supposed to be a quick run to the grocery store, get some stuff, get back home. So by the time I get home, it's like dinner time. And like I said, I'm just mentally, mentally exhausted. Um, so yeah. And, uh, like I said, the, the, the tool scavenger hunt was another, <laughs> it's just like, I, I, I don't know. It, 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 so yes, I have my B lead now. Um, Hey, cool. How you doing, man? Oh, I'll try to take you to school. Uh, so I'm going to basically get started dark, you, you know, it's going to be darker cause I'm using a B lead, but just tightening up some of the quick drawing, uh, that I did for this cover recreation. Um, yes, I am tracing it. What's the point? I'm, you know, I'm not going to redraw this. I'm not like, uh, you know, uh, it's not one of those things where it's uh, <laughs> it's effective to try to redraw and recreate the wheel when you've already done it once. Um, may as well take what you have as a, a starting point. And that's what I've done. You know, so basically I'm redrawing it and re-inking it. And making, you know, a few little changes that I see along the way that um, for me, you know, I look at and I'm like, you know, if I did that again, I would do this. And I, just one quick little thing I'm going to show you here um, is something like this area on cap. Uh, don't know. Let's see. Let me Let me get it centered here. Okay, so everyone knows this part of Cap's costume is blue, the middle is white, and this always bothered me, not this part, but in his bicep, this always bothered me that it was so dark. This is okay because it falls underneath a shadow and comes into the bicep, so it's the biceps going over, which I have, and what, what bothered me was the darkness I had made this bicep, so as you can see, I've opened these lines up. Um, on the, on the recreation, just so that that white, you know, uh, tone is, is, you know, it's not as dark. I know it's a little thing, but it's just something that when I, when I look at this all the time, I'm like, you know, that should have been more open. And then, yeah, it can get dark in here when it goes into Cap's chain mail. So little things like that, I'm, I'm looking at and, making decisions on. <clears throat> so I guess right. I've bored everyone to tears. <laughs> Are you using the uh, Windsor Newton ink? Uh, no, I'm using my uh, Pelican. Okay. Um, that's what I, what I used when I inked it the first time around. I'm using a combination of, um, I keep wanting to put this uh, over on my shelf but I needed it out for my reference. So, um, yeah, I'm using the Pelican ink, which luckily I have a good stock of, so I didn't have to run around and try to find that. Um, I am using some, uh, pit pens, some liners, but I did want the one Oh twos because I like the way, um, they give me a bounce on smaller stuff. So I'm just darkening up uh, Hawkeye's bow here. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. David Wyatt says, where can we find the stream on Facebook? Well, I thought it should be on Facebook. I see. Hey, Aaron. Aaron, I'm supposed to be there. Uh, let's see. Let me answer to David. I uh, should be. Should be on the fan page. That's where I put it. I assume it's there. I see people uh, posting. There's Jeff Young, Jared Myers. See, it is on Facebook. All right, good. And I will probably, um, I plan on going to about one o'clock and then I got to stop and uh, make my son and maybe myself some lunch. And uh, you might see me, wow, I'm, I'm hearing some thunder. We had a, a heck of a storm going on last night. Man, you sure wasn't all that Taco Bell. <laughs> No Taco Bell last night. So yeah, this this part I'm just this making it darker, refining the tracing that I did. And I also do that when I'm inking. Um Well, e AG says he sees your point about lightening the feathering on the bicep. You have a template big enough for the lines on the cap shield? Uh, no, I ne I didn't even on the original, original, the original, <laughs> the original, the original one. Um, basically, I use this, this French curve. And I, uh, as you can see here on the original, now I don't know if you can, uh, there's a break in the line here and it's, it's basically it's connecting. It's using the template to get part of the curve and then maybe using a circle template to do a little bit of this and then back with the French curve or freehand. But on something like this, I, I tend to want to, um, to use some tools. Uh, instead of freehand, because it is so big. So I, I, I you know, I wasn't going, as Ron knows, I, I was not going to stream any of this. That's why I think I even posted on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw that. Um, but... I'm supposed to have this done by the end of the month, so I want to do it. So I figured maybe if I stream some, it'll change my luck. <laughs> that thunder does not sound promising. But anyway, we'll we'll deal with that. If uh, if the electricity goes out, can't do nothing. Can't do nothing about that. So basically, I go back over my loose drawing, and I keep. I keep the reference handy here. And I don't really try to make it exact because that's going to be impossible. There's there's only one person that can do that. Um, <laughs> uh, you there, Ron? I am here. You You missed my joke. I said, I'm not going to make it uh, exact. There's only one person that can do that. That person's not in Florida. <laughs> but it is. A, it will be as exact as I can make it. And since I was the original inker, um, like I said, I, I there are a few things that as I matured in my inking that I now see that, hey, you know, I, I, I can tighten up that feathering a little bit or I can adjust this just, just like on cap. It's a subtle thing. 
it's not going to stand out uh, like a sore thumb. But for me, it it makes a difference in the aesthetics, you know, because like I said, there every time I look at my old work, something will go like, yeah, you know, I, I could have done that differently. And so now I, I have a chance to, so why not? Now, if you can remember back to the original cover when you were doing it, was there one uh, part of the cover that you enjoyed the most? Um, getting it done. No. <laughs> getting paid. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure that I didn't get paid. I don't think I got paid any extra for this, even though it was an oversized, I think Mike drew it on a 20 by 30 piece of illustration board. Um, I know they used it for promotional poster and stuff, but I don't remember that either one of us got paid extra for that. And we knew it was going to be a promotional poster. I, I, that's why the extra characters that you'll see on Mike Zek's uh, print that he, that's, that's the original, original cover, but they, a couple of the characters didn't make it to the, to the secret wars because they were, I think it was a kitty pride or what do they call her now? Shadow cat or something. Uh, Mr. Fantastic was on the original, but he would have covered too much of the logo. Um, trying to think, I think there was somebody else. Oh, and Thor was also cut out. And that's why you've got thunder this morning. Somebody's pissed. Yeah, there, there you go. Well, Joseph says to channel your inner Zach. Well, that's what I'm doing. Um, AG says it's a huge piece in the artist edition book. Yes, it's, it's very huge. I think it's a try fold out and I'm not even sure that's the original size. It may have had to be um, a bit smaller. Let's see. I'm trying to I'm trying to see some of my lines. They're uh, they they tend to be a little lost here. Or actually, I, I don't think I, uh, I don't think I drew Hawkeye's hand in, but I'll just do it now. It's not that hard. Not once I, I did draw like this forefinger, which I know you still can't see. I know that if we get some serious thunder, I'll have a visitor come in. And that would be my son, Jacob, because as most kids, he is afraid of thunder. I thought you were talking about the cat for a second. Uh, she usually, my door shut, so she, <laughs> she would probably get under the bed. But the couch will be sufficient for her. Now, if Drew was here, we'd be having some stories of wonderment, of the wonder years of. <laughs> oh, he's probably burning down the kitchen right now. Yeah, right. He'll come on and he'll still work and he'll say, you know, I just had to put a fire out and everything's okay now. But while I cooked breakfast, I got three commissions done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I just like I bang these out while I was making pancakes and eggs and put a fire out that I started accidentally. But it was a productive. Uh... Mm -hmm. That man, a cape. David Wyatt says, I didn't realize that I was following the fan page. Well, David. That's the page you should be following. Well, I don't know. I, I don't do a lot on Facebook, so. But I, I think I should start, maybe. I, yeah. I have a very love-hate with Facebook, which I think a lot of people do, actually. I just, uh, I thought I could reach more people by going on Facebook. Uh, maybe people that were missing the YouTube. And if you aren't subscribed to my YouTube, please consider it. As everybody might know, or those that I'm over 400 subscribers, close to five. And I, I still owe a Captain America sketch cover that I will be giving away to one of my channel subscribers. But I still need to do that piece of work. So when that gets done, hopefully next month, uh, I will, um, I'll be having a giveaway for that. All right, so and I don't have to mess with that's gonna that'll be more in the inking phase. Uh, thank you, Rodney, for the subscription. Do appreciate it. At every hundred subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away something free. So since I haven't done the four hundred yet, you are eligible to win and if you look at my channel you and you see the 300 subscriber giveaway that was when i started this uh giveaway thing um and i got to 400 fairly quick and got busy with i guess it was maybe conventions or something last year and didn't get that sketch cover done so there's there's been a lag so there's there's time for you people to um that aren't subscribed to get on it and maybe push it to 500 for 400. I'm going to be doing a sketch cover of uh, captain America. So I don't know, you know, I guess I'm looking at my screen to see, I guess you can kind of see what, what's going on here. Um, Ron, are you on for tonight? Or do I have to, or do I have to get sleepy Craig? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what are we doing tonight? Do another stream? Yeah. If I, like I said, I, I'm not sure of the time, but. I need to continue working on this. So, uh, you know, I'm going to sometime after one o'clock, I'll have to break. And like I said, that's I've kind of established that as Jacob's lunchtime. So. Uh, I'll either be inking, which I'll probably ink what I'm. tightening up now or maybe finish uh i need to tighten up cyclops's forearm and and his bicep is just all black so i've tightened up his forehead his stuff here his arms shoulders and i'll probably be inking my way uh, i gotta do wolverine i'm gonna leave the shield it's just 
you know, it's some stuff that not that tough. Well, GMTC podcast says he can't believe what he's seeing right now. Oh, well, thank you, GMT. And Eric Young, this is a lot of fun to watch. Appreciate the great commentary, John. You rock. Hey, Eric, how you doing, man? Ron, I don't know. You probably don't remember, Eric. We met him uh, in Atlanta. Man, that was some time ago, a year ago. Yeah, right? I know it. Yeah, got to wake up and walk down, get a little Dunkin' coffee. Yeah, that that uh, that Omni was nice, but it was odd. Oh, and a twelve cool. mile hike to the convention center. <laughs> Maybe that's what was odd. Yeah, because we had to like take that Big walk out and around or something. Yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it was that long. I think it was just because it was outside and it was hot. Oh wait, but then once we got into yeah, because we were the furthest convention center, we had to pass one where they were having a basketball tournament. Right. Yeah, because you have to walk all the way to the convention center and then all the way. Then once you get in the building, it's cool. And then, but it was still as I think probably what. Maybe right at around the, uh, I know it was a little more than a quarter of a mile, I think. I know some people were taking a, a shuttle over <laughs> to the, uh, you know, to the front entrance where you can yep. get in. But Smart. Eh, lazy. I'm not that old yet. Speak for yourself. I am. <laughs> Ron would have been, yeah, let's take that air conditioned shuttle mm -hmm. over. AC shuttle. Nighthawk Warrior. Hey, everyone, cool cover. Hey, Nighthawk Warrior. Yeah, we got uh, Ray Dog. What up, JB? Hey, Ray. Nighthawk wants to know. So, is this a comparison? No, I'm I'm recreating it. So, uh, I did a, a light trace over, and now I'm going back over and and making things a little more dark and precise, so I can go to inking. Because when you get under the light table, it's not fun to put a lot of hours in there with that light hitting you in the face. So I want to get it traced off as quick as possible. And so I made sure I got as all the, uh, the little landmarks I needed to go back in and then that's why I'm holding my, my reference here so I can go back and forth to it and tighten up the penciling before I get to the inks on it. It's it's a bit of a process. It's you know, I'm I'm not just printing this out as a blue line and re-inking it. It is a true recreation. Being able to print blue lines out in ink would have, of course, been the easier way. But number one, I can't print on this is a 14 by 20 piece of paper and with a 12 and a half by 18 and a half image area. So I can't print that out. I don't know. 
probably could have had somebody do it, but I feel like a recreation is just not inking over a blue line copy. I feel it's uh, redoing the the actual art. Well, Nighthawk thought you were going to draw your own characters into the poses from the cover. No, 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 no. This is for a, this is for somebody. Um, they they want a recreation of the cover, and that doesn't that includes the blurb, which I've got here, and uh, I've got the corner box ruled off. I haven't put the characters or the the comics code authority thing. And I'll letter in the logo and stuff up top. The only thing I'm not putting in is that silly uh, UPC box. Because that's just kind of a waste. Right, Ron? Just gets in the way of the art. Wrecked. Focus on the art. So doing something like this is a little bit of a longer process. Um, I think the original time I did this cover, of course, I wasn't doing the lettering and stuff. It probably took me, I'm going to guess three days to ink. I could be off on that, but... You know, it was it was a job. It's something that you know i I wanted to to do the best I could at that time. So like I said, I, I'm attempting to go till one. Can't have a flat tire if I'm not out driving. Boy, I you know, what is it, Ron? It, it's you had flat tires. I had same I, never, day. I yeah, same day. But I was gonna say I've never had flat tires until I met you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up with that? Now I've had I've had two. I was in a separate city. It's true. Uh, Dan is in the room. Partouche says, uh, "Looking good, Big John." Thank you, Daniel. Aaron Bird wants to know: Are there any covers you feel deserve more attention than they have received? Mm, that I've worked on, or we'll give them a chance to clarify that. David Wyatt, I want to see this recreated, but with the Thundercats, He-Man and the Monkeys. If he's got the money. <laughs> David says, sounds like a great song title. I've never had flat tires till I met you. <laughs> that's right. That's a, it's a country music song. Aaron says, yes, your work. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, one of my favorite uh, Captain America covers that Mike Zek and I did is Cap. I think it's 284 or 286. It's cap on the ledge, and, and there's an American flag right down below him. It's a very quiet cover, but Ron will probably punch that up in a minute and let you know exactly what which one I'm talking about. I'm actually typing into the chat, so not that. Okay. I'll get on that in a minute. I think that that was a nice. I that's one of my favorite covers we did. 
Um, I'm sure if I look back at some of the Batman covers I did with Kelly Jones, some of those were probably, uh, well, I will, I, you know what cover I actually, it, it kind of does stick out in my mind that Kelly and I did was the, it, I don't know what issue it was, but it was a Batman issue with the penguin in it. And it was a close up of the penguin and up in the, the hat of Batman, of uh, Batman of the penguin you see the reflection of batman uh it's very subtle i you know it's like when i first got kelly's pencils on that i didn't even notice it until i was you know about to ink that area and i'm like oh he he put batman in there pretty cool yeah well aaron said it was uh 284 284 yeah um i was replying to uh nighthawk he said they look similar what you're working on to what you're holding so i just had to let them know they're similar for that reason the person commissioned this wanting a recreation of that cover okay uh so it's one to make sure he understood what was going on uh gmtc podcast says love the death lock and cap cover with cap in his scope yeah in fact uh i think it was all three of the covers we did for that three-part uh, I really thought those were, were good covers, but that one is probably the one that gets the most attention. And I did do a recreation. I, I inked it over Mike's pencils uh, when Mike was doing recreations back in the 90s, I think. Guy commissioned Mike to do the pencils and for me to ink it. So another uh, question we kind of addressed earlier, but for the people just tuning in from John Pinto, are there parts of the original cover you are unhappy with? And if so, will you be recreating those parts faithfully or tweaking them to your liking? I, I'm tweaking them, John. That's uh, I had mentioned earlier, and I'll just go over it real quick. Like on Captain America's bicep here, my feathering is is like black and, and even here. This I don't mind because it's it's in a shadow area um, and it's, you know, it's got the proper lighting. This I always thought was too dark for Cap's white area. Um, so in the recreation, it's probably hard to see. Let me see if bringing it to the camera closer. Yeah, that might help. I've opened up that feathering so that it, re you know, it reflects, no pun intended, that it's white there um, in Cap's uniform. Well, Lloyd says Cap Annual 8 is his favorite cover of yours and sex. Yes, that's if that might be my favorite cover that Mike and I ever did. Um, might be. You have a uh, solid body of work to go back to, so it'd be hard to choose a few of them. It is, and that's why I say it's like that. That right around that time period, though. Um, I think Mike and I were really um, you know we were very i don't know just um what's the i'm not i'm looking for the right word help me out here ron we were kicking ass yeah <laughs> it was like during there was like a two to three year period of uh you're on your game yeah where i i think that you know we had finally began to, uh, you know, Mike knew what to give me in the pencils and I kind of hopefully knew what to give him uh, in the inks. Billy said you didn't mention the she cat covers. Oh, uh, well, I think the guy asked me about the Zek. Uh, wasn't it the Zek covers that he specifically wanted to know about? 
because I did ink she cat covers over Billy. I, he was mentioning any of your, any of your work. <laughs> okay. I thought it was specifically with Mike. Well, Nighthawks out of here. He says, "Have a nice live stream, everybody." All right, Night. Maybe we'll see you uh, later on. Lloyd says, "Batman four three six was very cool, also." Uh, which one was that? Four three six. Jenny, I got your number. Four three six. <laughs> Not that one, is it? I, I don't think that's how the song went. Well, that's maybe a good thing. That's right. Be stuck on our head forever. The poor people that had that number. Right. Had to change it. Well, it was Batman Year 3, Part 1 of 4. Pat Broderick. I didn't do, I didn't ink covers on that. George Barrett did the covers. Yes, I was the inker, though. David Wyatt says 436 was Batman prowling through Orlando. <laughs> it could have been. Now, for those of you wondering, I think I had to show Ron this, right, Ron? If I can get it out. I don't want to really get my fingers all dirty and touch his paper, but uh, in these... Uh, when you're using a, a, a lead holder like this and you have a little sharpener, um, this little thing I pulled out is white on top when you first get it. I'm going to push it back in. And what it's for is when you, when you sharpen your lead, then you stick it in there and it cleans the dust off of your pencil i think i i showed you that right ron and you we were like oh that's what it's for yeah yeah jared zen says that looks amazing john very clean well thank you jared welcome welcome to the stream oh and i think we have drew in the house let me let me let me buzz him in here drew yeah just getting uh situated Hey, Drew. Let me see hey. here. I got Ron out of the way. Well, I mean, uh, off of the, you know. Did you get rid of him? Is that what you're saying? He took care of him? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. He sleeps and then with the fishes. The other way is you can just get a paper cloth because when you sharpen these and you get that dust, it sometimes makes a mess. He's 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 wearing his new concrete Adidas. Oh, that's nice. Right. <laughs> so, good to have you back. I am good to be back. Uh, things have been crazy, so I'm I'm there with you. Hopefully, uh, hope I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's going to end anytime soon. No, it uh, doesn't. I know people are saying this is the new norm. This is not normal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if this is normal. I don't really, I don't really want it. Yeah. yeah, this is pretty horrible at times, but um, it's fine. Like, and then um, I don't know. Still surviving. I'm pretty self-sufficient anyway, but it, it is a. Uh, it can be a struggle. I hear that. I've, I've, you know. I've I've had my share, especially trying to work on this recreation piece. I've the easiest part was doing a, a kind of a loose trace off of all the characters and stuff, and then I started hitting snags with trying to find 
just B leads uh, for a lead holder. And oh, B leads. Yeah, because I traced it off with an HB, which was fine. It was a little bit hard though. And when I wanted to go back and just darken up the pencil so I could ink it, and it's like I wanted something softer. And I don't have good art supply stores around here. So I found two B leads. I bought those. Those are a little too soft, but I figured, well, it's better than an HB. And I worked with those for a day. And then the very next day, I did find a box, or actually, yeah, a box of B leads. And I just, you know, they just pop up. It's like after I go through all this search to find stuff, I, I find like 102 nibs are like, Ron found them at Staples and was smart enough to actually order some for himself. I thought I could find them locally because we have one, <clears throat> it's a paint store. I've talked about it before, but they, they have art supply store and that's where I used to get all my stuff. And I thought they would have a few with the holder or at least that little, you know, where you can buy the 102 nib and the holder and one for like $5 or something. <laughs> yeah, something yeah, crazy. yeah. That's, the, that's the starter set. Yeah. And they didn't have that. And then they, they have one like, in two different cities. So I, I went to the other city and they didn't have anything. And the, you know, they always say, well, we can order it for you. And I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I'm talking to Ron and he's telling me he's getting one Oh two nibs in that day. And I'm like, great. I, maybe I should have staples. Well, you know, I'm like, what did that, what staples got them for? I was like, I'll find them. And I didn't, so I finally did. And then I, then when I, uh, I actually, I found a box of five. Uh, I don't know. I probably bought them back in the '90s, sometime. Yeah, I, I haven't used one of twos in a long time. I may revisit them. Um, I bounce back and forth uh, on the nibs and the brushes and the pens, and it, it's like uh, I'm just never satisfied. Yeah, I I just doing this cover recreation. I know I used a brush and a 102 and I you know, I while I like the uh liner pens, there's certain little things in in these smaller faces like a little bit of bouncy line and stuff that I can't get with those that a 102 will let me get. Yeah. And so that was my my main reason of trying to find them, so Finally got them. Where'd you find them? Well, like I said, I, I, you know, I'm not in my office anymore because I had to vacate out of there. Because uh, uh, can't keep it with without the convention income. Yeah. So uh, I packed stuff away and I kind of forgot about them. And then I was looking at a box trying to find a holder. And I found a bunch of other pinpoints. And I was like, well, I don't have, you know, no 102s. And then I revisited that box again. And it's like it was hiding on me, you know, that, that thing. And all of a sudden, it's like, there, I see them. Like a box, a, a hunt box. And I opened it up. And I probably had half a dozen. Um, oh, at one point, I probably had half a dozen in there, but it was down to five. And I, I called Ron up and I said, I can't believe I just found these. And then it became yeah, trying to find I a holder. Find things all the time. <laughs> What's that? I said, I find stuff all the time. Uh, yeah, no, it's crazy. Like, and, oh, I forgot I had these. Yep. I order stuff and then I, you know, it's on the way and it's like I found what I just ordered. Well, you know what? That's the thing. You'll probably lose the stuff you just ordered. And, oh, I know. Uh, you'll find it and be like, oh, man, I just ordered more of these. <laughs> Didn't I do that before? The only thing I don't regret ordering is paper. Yeah, I'm paper rich. Did we lose Ron or is he Ron? I told you he sleeps with the fishes. I'm telling you, there's Mr. Zablo in. You know, I was watching this mafia 
documentary on Netflix, and there was this guy. He said this thing, which is it sounds it's horrible, but I love it. They're interviewing this guy, and he's like, you know, straight up old school New York. Uh, he's probably in his sixties. He goes, uh, if you don't pay him, they take your knees and they bend them backwards to the and stuff them in your pocket. Uh. I was like, oh, that's amazing. I'll bend your knees backwards and stuff them in your pocket. I was like, ouch. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and, you know, I just saw it in my head. I was like, that's amazing. I'll never have an opportunity to use that, that, that phrase, but man, I'm going to keep it in my back pocket just in case. Huh. Ron, Ron says he is back but he said no he's been talking but no one can hear him yeah i haven't heard him let me see hey ron hey you, all right when, when i'm on backstage nobody can hear me nor you guys so real fast uh drew um jared says hello and craig's in and says hi to everybody he watched you last night he watched two last night drew oh what did you do <laughs> He said, I watched I that last, last night, Drew. Oh, it must oh. have been the show. He was oh, the, the Mafia thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm in the second episode. It's pretty good. It's really good. There's a lot of things I didn't know. Um, I mean, well, how would I know? Like, I've ever been in the mob other than watching movies. Uh, but sure. It's crazy how what are you, what are you trying to say? Are. <laughs> uh, Is it the yeah. Netflix thing? The, the Mafia thing? Yes. That they just released? It's pretty good. I don't know if it was just released. It just popped up after. I watched another uh, another documentary. I forget which one. That's how good it was that I forgot which one it was. Um, and it, you know how sometimes it plays like a preview of something when you finish yeah. something? And it, yeah, well, that was playing. And you know what? I was just like, man, I'll watch that. Why not? You got me, Netflix. There, there was uh, another documentary I watched. And, Ron, you know who else was in that one? Oh, I think it was the Bob Dylan one. I, I, I didn't finish it because it was kind of droning on. But, again, who makes an appearance? Wild Bill. All right. And I'm like, is this Bill Clinton's new job is to just appear in documentaries? And talk I just saw him it. appear in a documentary. Oh, well. I know, Drew. <laughs> I, I, I it watched was a basketball documentary. Uh, who oh, was it the Jordan? Oh, the Jordan one? Okay, yeah, that must have been where I saw him then. Because I'm you watching, told me the Jordan one. I'm watching that now. No, no, no. I'm. I just started watching that like this week, I think, while I was working. And Maybe it was another one. It was definitely a basketball yes, one he, I was watching. He he was in um the music producer. I forget his first name. His last name is Foster. John William, is it uh what's his name? He did cats, right? Or no? No, oh, he I did. he's produced almost everybody. Uh and he that's that's he's trying he hasn't done a broadway thing oh uh, well i you know trump's in the mafia one uh <laughs> which blew I, which i went oh okay robert foster that's it zablo got it hey uh boatwright family welcome good to see you Cool as um, has a question for drew what kind of paper are you using it looks uh cool like uh the texture Are you back it here? Is, uh, Canton. Oh, is it John or me? I no, it's you. It's you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of. I'm kind of fragmented. I'm like got my attention split. Um. But it, did he ask me what the paper was? Or yeah, John? you. True. Um, it's a Canson VTNs. I think it's called something like that. It's like pastel paper. It's half cotton and half something else. Um, 
uh, <laughs> the cotton is really is absorbent, um, and it's almost like a fine grit sandpaper, since it's pastel paper and the grit holds the color, also holds ink really well. Um, hey, so. Drew, I, I was going to ask you. So the um, because I did order a pad or two of the uh, mixed media uh gray Strathmore. Strathmore? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Did, stuff's awesome. But you still had some Canson left over to use? No, I or? use them both. Oh, okay. Uh it matters what, what the piece is. Because the thing is with the mixed media paper, it doesn't uh the colors aren't as vibrant, I feel. I feel okay. like uh it dulls it a little, but that works for some things. Um, and then the Canson paper, uh, like when you, you have a subject like this silver surfer, where I know there's going to be like some strong whites right. stuff in it, it just pops more. Um, if I have something that I need to color heavy, then I use the other paper cause it actually the, since it's like Bristol, um, the other paper is just toned Bristol to me, uh, it's it's easier to to spread the ink like the color on um but this paper the color is more accurate and pops so it just matters what it is really um, okay because it looked to me like you were um using more of the strathmore paper and i haven't tried it out well my six by eight drawings are on that wet media and it's a 184 pound and that's some heavy, that's some heavy paper. Yeah. I like heavy paper. Um, I just like it. It, it feels like, uh, that's why you, like there's other pastel, um, papers that you can get. Um, uh, but they're all like 80 pound and yeah. Uh, it, this is 110, I think, or 120. Um, so I had, unless I get, you can get it carded board, like pastel carded, like cardboard, which is, well, carded board. It's like a, it's super thick. Um, but then that won't run through my printer. Right. Because uh, I'll have to sketch on the paper. Uh, and if you sketch on this, like I said, it's very gritty. Um, like it tends to hold uh, and then you have to use a, a better eraser. And if you erase too much on this, um, since it is, ha it's not just your standard paper. It's a little, little higher quality. It's got, you know, a 50% cotton and it. it'll start eating into it. Uh, Cause I mean, I mean, how many people erase pastels? Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 so it, it's, it's, it's like, you you have to be a little confident in your line because uh, um, it's not forgiving when it comes to pencil. Because um, I've done a few where I just drew on the board, mm -hmm. on the paper. And um, yeah, I, I found with one of them because I was having some troubles. I was like, oh, like I, you can't, you can't play around. Um with this paper. Boom. This is actually a Heroes Con uh, commission. <laughs> I have like six left to do. I only took eight, but uh, I had a deadline, <laughs> uh, a quick deadline um, that just kind of sprung up on me. Uh, so... I had to put everything aside and I kind of worked on that for like two or three weeks. Um, you know, here and there posting things. Right. Generally at the end of the day. Um, uh, but now I'm, I'm on a, I'm kind of in a holding pattern. So mm -hmm. I'm like, that's why I've been blazing through these pieces. Uh, I'm trying to catch up. I don't want anybody to get upset, man. Um, even though I don't think the people who commissioned me would get upset, uh, but it's like a courtesy, man. They, they. Uh, that's why I don't take uh, payments on my commissions anymore till they're done. Um, just because, like, the way the COVID thing is running, 
like a comic job may just pop up uh, <laughs> and I have to take it because, you know, there's really not that many of them going around right now. Right. Um, so uh, uh, if I take the pen after, then I'm obligated to do it just then. And I can take that other job to pay my bills, you know, mm-hmm. which, you know, it hasn't happened because every comic job that I've had, although I've finished them, uh, they're not paying till September. Um, and that sucks. Uh, that sucks. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you do all this work and then you're like, I got to wait till when? Like September? Oh. Oh, that's it. so. I've been doing commissions to float myself. Um, lucky, uh, I haven't had an issue. Like I haven't said I'm taking commissions because I'm not really taking them. I'm I'm calling it taking requests. So like people will be like, "Well, I, I like this," you know, and I tell them how much it is. I was like, "Look, I'll take payment after um, it's done." That way, you know, it's it's more of a request than it is a. Uh, a standard, uh, I, you pay me and then wait type deal. Um, it, it just allows me the freedom. If, like I said, a job pops up, um, or a bill. Cause then I know, well, this bill is $165. This commission is 175. Boom. You know, uh, Let's see. Way of doing things. I now, think Ron's telling me, he wants out of the stream because he's taking away. Yeah, just put me in the uh, back room, in case uh, you need me. But you still let me let me see. I don't know why. Did we have this problem before? If there's three people, you you couldn't talk, right? In the background, no, I can't yeah. talk. But uh, how we do this? Nobody needs to see my icon. They need to see your art and Drew's art. Yeah, but we need someone. Uh, Joe, we'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Drew, Aaron Bird wants to know your rates. Do you want to? Uh, you want? Um... Here, actually, I may get off and come back on. I'm gonna. T- it's on my phone right now, but I got a new webcam I haven't used yet, so I'm gonna get back on with that because it's lagging for me. And okay. it's because I'm probably on my phone, so it's using the Wi-Fi. If I use my webcam, it'll be uh, hardwired in, you know, because my PC yeah. is connected via the Ethernet. Um, right. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be back. Okay. Wait, there, there's got to be a way that... But that's right. We had. I remember. It's been a while since I've been on Streamyard. So you can pin somebody individually. Uh, so that works when it's just you and I'm doing background uh, reading of butts. Uh, yeah, and that's the weird thing, though. You add one more person in, and suddenly it's like it throws the whole thing into a conniption. Yeah, they that's, need to fix that. And, and J- Jared texted me a little bit ago saying that this is still a problem. He thought you found a loophole having me in the. Uh, back room <laughs> and i'm like no they, they can't hear me <laughs> okay uh well craig likes the taking requests well uh, of course that's a smart move. That's, you know he's mr <laughs> he's mr if you're over 20 dollars, i gotta really think hard about that commission piece And you just lost a viewer. <laughs> it must have been Zaylo. Well, nobody can give him a hard time about saying, "Well, you took my money and get my piece done." Hey, when I when I do it, I let people know it's gonna be like right now. I've been telling people I'm not doing anything else till August. which is coming up and I've got stuff that needs to be done as long as I think as long as people know they're in for a wait, like you tell them six months, Mm -hmm. if they're good with it, then I'm fine with it. 
but it's all personal preference. I get that. Uh, I may take a call. I know what I'm going to do. Hey, Zablo. I'm going to call you and put you on speakerphone, right? Let's try that. Let's let's just try it. I don't know if it'll work or not. What, what are you trying? I'm just going to call Zablo, or I can call you and put you on speakerphone. Then you can still talk to me. But that'll hold up your phone, right? Yeah, like I just now for while on vacation, another work call. Okay, let me uh, let me do this. Call Craig Zablo Mobile. Calling Craig Zablo Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that? Now I got got him on speakerphone. <laughs> oh, but see now we have your um echo. Yeah, you don't need your your we don't need your sound on. On your on your computer. Oh, but see now we have your um we don't need your we don't need your sound on. Craig, do you have your sound off on your computer? Zeblo, do you understand you don't need your computer sound on? Because you're going to hear it through my computer. Nobody else is in. It's just me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Ron's on a call. All right. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, Jared. Jared, don't go. Jared's got to go spend some brother time. It's not good. Well, they might. They're, they they they've been known to hit a goodwill yeah, or two. Uh, uh, the yard they sale stuff. Good, they, they find some good stuff out there. Oh, he just has that stuff. He just says he's finding it. <laughs> Wait, that, he pulls stuff out of his own collection. <laughs> yes, but I'm bump. Hey, should we play some dad rap for Lloyd? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I, I believe you're a, a not not into the dad rap either, right? No, I didn't. I'm not a dad rapper. Lloyd, you, you, uh, wait a minute. We got Drew Moss back with us. Yay. Okay. I and see, I don't see him. Oh. Okay. I just got this camera, so... It is, uh, I have no idea how it's set up, so. So, can you, it, it, Drew, it looks good. Camera yeah, it looks, looks way good. better than that phone, right? Yeah. Um, hey, Craig. Yo. Can you hear Drew talking? Say something, Drew. Uh, something. Yeah, I can hear Drew. Okay. Drew, can you hear Craig? I can. It sounds like he's on speakerphone. Yeah, he is. Okay, well, there you go. Because the only way to have a third person into this crazy stream yard is to do a hack of some way. Oh, really? Yeah. Because as soon as I put a third person in that's not showing up, you know, just to have somebody moderate the chat, 
it all goes awry. Yeah, I was having problems getting my camera and the mic working at the same time. Do what now, Craig? So call Dard. Dard can put in, uh, uh, if he has a, a headphone, he can put it into his phone and he can, uh, it'll, the sound will be clear too. Uh, if he puts headphone into that. Yeah, if, he, if he's talking like on a, uh, on a speaker or on his yeah, not using it. I'm no. talking to you off my phone right now. Yeah, I know. But I don't, I don't have a, uh, headphones on everything. Right. But if you had... If you had... Uh, Earphones, earbuds. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't know if that would make a huge difference to who? To you? No, no. Well, to me, but also to the people that, that, that it would sound clearer. Well, I don't yeah. think you or Ron have a headset, right? Um, Not for your I phone. Have one somewhere, but the one I've got goes into my computer. My best one goes into my computer. Okay. But you can call Ron because he, he, he's your moderator. I don't want yeah, but he's he's he he gets work calls. That's what he's on right now. Uh, well, that's one thing I don't get. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Let's see. All right. I'm, uh, I'm going to add Ron back to the stream real quick. Hey. Okay. So, Ron, I got Zablo on speakerphone. I hear that. You hear Ron, Craig? Yeah. We got a better picture on Drew now. This is this is a problem StreamYard really needs to figure out. That somebody can moderate without being on the window. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just um, you know, it's really frustrating. So what should we do? I, I, I well, I'm I'm just saying I'm on Facebook and YouTube, so I the chat might be more than I can look up and handle. That's why I needed someone. Craig, do you want me to let you go? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and let uh, let, let yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you're you're turning into Don Polson. Indeed. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, yeah, fellas. Uh, yeah, I know. I got you. All right. All right Bye. Bye, Craig. Oh, my goodness. That's Ron. What's up, Ron Wynn? Hey, how's it going? Are you going to do this? I guess we can do this. Okay, so then I can... All right, Danny. Uh, I actually, I I'm on my laptop. We're trying to get a um, a chat host in, but with Streamyard, if the person is not visible, you can't hear them, which is ridiculous. Really, yeah, that is. That's just ridiculous. Um, and you know what? They've heard people all the time say, like, "Can you please fix this?" It's something, you know, it's something they should do, like, immediately. That should be their, you know. Like, people are wanting to, to be able to also put this feed out to Instagram, but they can't do that yet. And, okay, yeah. fine. I, you know what? That's the biggest yeah. problem, though, I think people are having is this one that I'm dealing with is if somebody is, is doing hosting, a chat, they have to be in the, the stream. And, you know, sometimes that person either doesn't want to be or need to be in the stream. Yeah, well, Instagram, uh, I will say, I wish that you could stream. To, I'm, you can't stream to 
Instagram on anything other than Instagram. Right. Um, because whenever I stream on Instagram, I get a lot of interaction. Um, like every time, it's always guaranteed, you know? Uh, and Instagram tends to be, for me, uh, more of a global thing. And, right. And that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, I really enjoy, like, the different perspective on some things. So, and, and that's why I have this one going to YouTube and Facebook right now uh, to get the, the broader reach. Yeah. Facebook's pretty good, but, you know, it's, it, it's my son says it's for old people. Uh, <laughs> you don't get the, the, the younger crowd. Um, but, I mean, is that good or is that bad? I don't know. Uh, like I said, it's all perspective to me. Right. Um, Depends on what you're, you know, if you're looking for people to buy stuff, I think the older crowd that has money might be better. Yes. Um, well, with me, like, I had an interesting exchange on Instagram once. Uh, this guy was like, uh, why do you sell printed art as originals? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he thought that the work I was doing wasn't done traditionally, that I, I just print it out and sell it as an original, which I guess is a compliment in a <laughs> sense. But it was also like, it, like I, I was so incensed, but then I was like, well, you know what? It's not really worth my time. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna. Like I don't know your your ignorance. It's not my problem. Uh, <laughs> like I, I don't. I, I'm not gonna go through this. And like, and plus, you're probably twelve. Um, <laughs> like you know, like why am I gonna argue with a twelve year old? So because you can win. Uh, yeah, I guess I probably couldn't because he'd probably say something that'll make me mad. Like you're dumb or <laughs> you smell like feet or something. And I'm like, what? I don't smell like feet. I, it's a glandular problem. <laughs> I don't smell like feet. I smell like underarms, okay? There's a difference. Yeah, I will say that Like, I, my feet don't smell. Uh, I know that. Um, but, yeah, the underarm thing, yeah, he, he probably makes a good point there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> let me get that fixed. Hey, we've been having some heat. What about you up there in Virginia? It's been 100 degrees every day. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm talking about. It sucks, and it's not going away anytime soon. Uh, yeah. I think it said that uh, next Monday, not this one coming up, but the next Monday is going to be, uh, or Monday after next, I guess. I don't know. It, it's going to be over a week before it cools down. Ugh. Yay, the South. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you're not even far south. It, no. now, you, you, like Florida, you still have a lot of humidity in Virginia, right? Yes, it's like us walking out into a pool. Like like the, the air is a pool. You can right. taste the moisture in the air. Yep. People that have never lived in high humidity places when they when they come here to Florida... They just, they, they, they just, you know, it's like that you can see them gasping for air. Well, I, you know, and I, I sympathize, uh, cause, uh, I hate it. Uh, I hate that, that when the humidity is so thick, like it feels like you're swimming outside. Yeah. Um, so I, I sympathize like, cause if you don't even know what that feels like, uh, well, you know, you're in for a nightmare of a day. Uh, <laughs> hey, have you been? Have you been to Arizona? No, I have not. Where My they, wife has. It's a dry heat, and you know what? I mean, you sweat, but it it you don't really know it because it dries so fast. Because there's no humidity to keep it like you know to keep you like moist. Yeah, you got to hydrate though. Right. Well, you got to hydrate here too. So yeah. You know, I, but, you know, I would much rather have the dry heat than the humid heat. I was talking to an artist from Arizona, and I was asking him about that because he had come to Heroes. And I was like, well, you know, 
um, how's the heat there? And he's like, oh, it's a, and he said the same thing. It's a dry heat. And I was like, well, that must be nice. He's like, no, dude, 112 is still 112. Uh, dry or not, it's still pretty hot. It is. Uh, and I was like, he's like, you know, he was like uh, saying in the summer, it's sad that the kids there should go to school in the winter when it's cooler. And then in the summer, they should have it off uh, because it's it's just so hot during the summer. And, you know, people with the air conditioning goes out like that's you're done. Oh, like, yeah. There, there's no way. Uh, I was like, yeah, he's like, but, you know, of course, they have to keep the standard of um, education that everybody else does. But it made sense to me. I was like, oh, yeah, that would be great. He's like, yeah, it's nice outside in the winter if, um, you know, kids can't go outside in the summer. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we have that problem. My my son, uh, sometimes if it's too hot when they have their <laughs> recess period, they they go to the gymnasium and do something. They're not allowed out on the playground. Yeah, I, that, that makes sense. Um. The only difference here and there, like, I mean, of course, it it's probably stays hotter more there. Uh, like, we get these weeks where this is actually pretty extreme that it's going to last this long because uh, it's been, like, 100 degrees since, I don't know, I want to say Sunday or uh -huh. maybe Saturday, and it's going to be another week of this. Um, but then we also get snow, uh, and that, that blows. I hate snow. I hate snow too. That's why I stayed in Florida. I really would rather have heat than cold. Yeah, we get seasons, uh, like legit seasons. Um, sometimes we don't. Sometimes our fall is is more like summer to winter. Uh, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> I love the fall. I like it when Florida's about 65 and low humidity. Then we got our perfect, perfect days. Does right, Ron? Really get like that? That is correct. It does. It. We get like, well, does the summer and spring can be like that at the beginning of spring? Um, uh, I mean, not summer, the fall. So the beginning, uh, mid fall, like it, it's wonderful. It's like, 60 65 you can wear a sweatshirt it's nice yeah the humidity is low but it lasts for like a few weeks right um, but yeah man we, then that cold hits and like we since you, you know if you live near the water it's always windy like right. it, like i live like i can see the water from my house and Danny Danny D on uh facebook mentions oh god Arizona and, and Nevada the worst. He said, I never had any ashy skin or chap lips in my life till I went to the desert. And that's true. I've yeah. done, I've done conventions out there and you know, you're out there for three or four days and just in that, you know, the first day, you know, you don't really know it. The second day you can wake up and like there's your nose is bleeding, you know, because it, it just dried and cracked. You know, it's like, So it's, it doesn't take long for it to dry, you know, for you to like dry out really fast. Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of chap lips. Uh, I don't know who is like, who goes, Oh man, I, I wish I had chap lips today. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't get chap lips. Either. I guess, you know, like you said, we're in a humid area. Um, the ashiness, yeah, I mean, that just happens everywhere, I think. Right. Um, but that's what lotion's for, right? Uh, but the chap lips, I don't re really get those very much. Um, it's usually in the winter. Uh, yeah. Just in the winter. Yeah. The winter is, God. I just, just that, that wind cuts. You know, they say Chicago's a windy city. But, like, if they came here in the winter, I, they'd be like, man, this is pretty, pretty windy, too. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get to like negatives a lot. I mean, every like maybe once a year we'll hit like like below zero temperatures. Sure. Um, maybe maybe once every other year, but uh, there's always that week where it hits like in the teens, and everybody's like, ah, 
crap. Because, you know, we're not like a, we're not Vermont or New York. Right. Uh, so, no one, like, pipes are bursting everywhere on everyone. No one's got any type of idea how to drive in ice and snow. It, it is like the apocalypse here. Uh, it's a week. It's a week of that. No one leaves their house, and the ones that do drive like maniacs. Um, if you drive down the road, it looks like Mad Max. I mean, there's like car in a ditch, car spun the <laughs> wrong way, and there's like emergency units everywhere. You're just this. It, it, it's horrible. <laughs> Not to I, I can ink and, and talk at the same time. I'm I'm just uh, I'm trying to look at the chat. That's why I saw your comment because I don't have a host apparently. Well, I don't want to interrupt anybody. <laughs> oh, that's true. He's that's so true. courteous. He is. I think I'm done inking this. I'm gonna ink another one. I have a bunch to ink. Uh, Drew, a- Drew's gonna knock out about twenty. Uh, well, I have that's one. Let's do let's do another one. Let's all right. Sleep, sleepwalker. How about that? Okay. <sighs> you two went from talking about body orders to thinking weather. Feels like it's not a portion of his in laws. Well, you know, we're trying to make him feel at home in his retirement. The dot tone says you need to be able to talk and ink at the same time. See, I just I, I took care of that myself because I was I was looking at the the chat when Good. when Drew was talking about the chappiness. <laughs> the chappiness. The chap uh, chap chap chappiness. I will say that's a skill I learned um, when I worked in the restaurant business. Oh, uh, I love when you talk about the restaurant business. Oh, uh, well, the, the being able to talk and work at the same time. Um, it was always interesting, like, when people first started, like, you know, when a new person comes who's never worked in a restaurant, and and uh, everybody there does that. You work and talk. Like, it's the only way you can talk and get your job done. Um, so new people would come, and then – they would always stop working when they talk. Uh, and they, I mean, they were super slow. And then you had to tell them, like, look, dude, stop. Like, you got to keep working. You can't just stop and put your hand on your hips and kind of talk, like, get to work. Um, so that translated into comics, pretty uh, comics and cons. Um, it was a valuable asset. Well, I know when I was doing Batman with Kelly, I was either talking to Doug or Kelly, um, and 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 inking pages, and and Kelly would be drawing, and Doug, he couldn't write and talk, but he made up for it because uh, Doug really didn't. I think he was more of a night owl guy. Well, I could see where writing and talking would be tough. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sometimes people talk to me, and I'll be if I'm writing, uh, not like actually for a living, but just writing something down. Like if yeah. you were like talking about commissions, I would write commission. Oh, I'm like, well, why did I do that? Because you're talking about it. By the way, I, I think it was was it uh, Aaron Bird was asking your rates, and that's when you scooted out of the room. I don't know if he's still around or not. Oh, my rates? Um, yeah, do you have a, a... I have a rate sheet. Can, do you want me to post it? I don't, um, I don't know if you can. Well, um, just contact me at uh, moss.drew um, at gmail. And uh, like I said, I'm not taking any kind of payments um, up front. Uh, people have been responding to that really well, and most people pay. Some people don't, um, but I don't care too much because, uh, I mean, it'll sell. It they always do. Um, but I've been getting a really good response from that. Like people are like, "Man, you know, it's really nice of you to do that." But it's really, it, it's not just me being nice. It, it allows me a huge convenience. Um, 
I can kind of do it when I when I want to. I don't. It does doesn't. It does not change the fact that people will still bug you about it, um, which is fine. Uh, because I never mind that. If people bug me about a commission, I am never, um, it's never a problem. So, uh, but I thought that that would kind of stop if they didn't pay anything. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that no, like they still do it. They still do it. They're just like, hey, man, am I next? Because I really want to get this thing. And I'm like, well, no. You know, there's a couple people ahead of you who also haven't paid for anything. Uh, <laughs> so I, I have to get to them first, you know, or if I have like a bill and somebody wants just a headshot, I can get that out of the way. Um, they get, you know, it matters what it is. If it's like Jack of hearts and that's just not getting it out of the way, that's a tough one. Uh, but if, you know, if it's Spider-Man or something, you know, it's a quick thing. I can pay that bill. I can get that person their art. Um, actually this sleepwalker was super easy to do. Uh, I love Sleepwalker. I've I've only drawn them one other time, um, and I feel like I did a really bad job the first time. Um, but I don't know. I I actually went on eBay and bought a bunch of back issues because I was. I mean, I I used to have them because you know Brett Blevins drew yep. it, mm -hmm. um, and he's one of my favorites. So, uh, but I don't have them anymore for some reason. Um, so I went on eBay and, and bought a, not a complete run, but a good amount of them. I actually, uh, I, I got the ink Brett on an issue of shadow of maybe it was issue 50 of shadow of the bat. Oh, really? Now the interesting thing is the story took place in the rain. So Ugh. I inked this stuff and then I had to like run my exacto through it to give it some rain texture and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like yeah i don't know yeah thank well, goodness for digital now yeah i could have uh laid in an overlay for rain yeah and it would have god that would be nerve-wracking to me um i don't know the paint markers have gotten really nice now and they dry super fast uh, i may even go that route i have um before but not on pages uh Well, but if you think about that, uh, if you have to do rain on a story that's being printed and then someone wants to buy the original, don't you think they want the texture of the rain in there? Yeah, well, if I've never done the razor thing. I've always just used... Uh, white out or white pen? No, paint markers. Okay, well, same different. Yeah, you, you still right. have to... Yeah, I still had to take a ruler and put them in. Right. Um, uh, yeah, the, they had, rain's always got to be straight, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess you know, with really heavy rain, you can kind of go nuts, like you know, with uh, with the feathering and stuff. Yeah. Um, but if it's just like you know, because sometimes the script does say you know light rain or it's just starting to sprinkle and. You, you just got to put a couple, and they can't be, like, wobbly because that's not how rain falls, you know? It yep. reaches that escape velo or the terminal velocity for whatever weight it is, rain. So mm -hmm. it just falls straight. Well, not straight down, but in a straight line. And sometimes it does go sideways, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, come come down for a hurricane, and you'll see some, some rain that's yeah. uh, almost horizontal. You know, I saw vertical rain once. Um no. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Vertical rain, not horizontal. Yeah. I, the, a vertical rain when a, a tornado went through my backyard. Uh, um, and I saw rain go everything. It was not just rain. It was leaves. It was a lot. And I didn't know what was going on. Um, I just looked out my back door because there was a tornado warning. And then... Somebody said they saw a water spout because I told you I'm real close to the water. Right. And it was like all over the place that there was a water spout and it was about to hit land. Well, it hit land, of course, in my neighborhood. Um, and then it hopped back up into the air and then hopped into my backyard. 
and then hopped back up into the air and then landed in my street and just went straight down like through some houses and into the next neighborhood. It was uh it was it was really crappy to be honest. Yeah, that's one thing we've been getting in Florida lately the past few years is tornadoes. Yeah, we never got tornadoes and I know. Now I'm like, we do. I'm like, hey, hurricanes are enough. We don't don't put those tornadoes on us. Yeah, tell me about it. Hurricanes suck. We <laughs> get them every once in a while. Um, yeah, you get them when they miss Florida, they come up your way. Yes, when they miss Florida. Um, I think only in my lifetime, maybe three have hit us directly. Um, one knocked the power out for like a month and a half. That sucked really bad. Yeah, that that's that's not fun when that happens. Yeah, I was on a bridge coming. Like the crazy thing is the hurricane's coming, right? And I was working in a restaurant. In a restaurant, it's never say die. But I was working, and the hurricane was coming. And where I live and where I worked, um, you had to go through a tunnel uh, to get home. And uh, I was like, dude, I'm leaving. And he's like, if you can't leave. I was like, dude, no one's coming here. No one's going to eat here tonight. Like, there's a hurricane. Like, it is on its way. It'll be here in the next few hours. I'm going home. And uh, so I just left. Um, but on the way home, like, you have to cross this long bridge that goes into the tunnel. And then you pop up on the peninsula where I live. Uh, well, the, the the bridges are pretty high, right? Uh, I mean, they're pretty high. And the water was coming over, like, the side of the bridge. Um, and whenever the wind blow, it blew, it blew my car from the left to the right lane. And then I would get back in the left lane and it'd blow me back into the right lane. And I did this Z pattern, like, I mean, like sideways, not like, not like a, a light, like, hey, we want you to go right, but more like it slid my car sideways. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with the water crashing over the bridge and all that, I, I was terrified. But I got home, and apparently I was the last car to go through because they closed the bridge and the tunnel uh, because, you know, dangerous. Uh <laughs> And then when I got home, I had to park a block away because it flooded so bad. I actually had to walk through like knee deep water uh, to get to my my apartment at the time. Um, it was horrible, man. And that wasn't even the worst hurricane. Um, uh, hurricanes suck. So I feel you, man. Uh, the worst uh, I've been through is in two thousand four, and we had. Uh, Four hurricanes, four bad yeah. ones in eight weeks. It was like every other weekend we had one. And uh, that sucks, man. The first one actually put two tree branches not only through our roof, but through the ceiling of the house. As a homeowner, that's like I was scared when I lived in apartments and condos, but when I owned a home, like when I, it, it became a whole different um, bout of stress. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, it, it's just, I couldn't even imagine week after week going, ah, oh, here comes another one. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's what it was. I mean, you, you would, you would get your yard and everything cleaned up and just to have another one, you know, coming in. Uh, so that was another thing. When we had that tornado, like, they had the whole block. Like, it was crazy. You could drive. It, it was almost like a hurricane in the sense that you could drive a block and look like nothing happened. Like, it was like, it was just whatever. It was, it was Saturday. Oh, yeah. Everybody, they but cut then you, that path, right? Yeah, and then you walk, you go to our neighborhood, and we have, like, uh, a FEMA and stuff there and they won't let like you had to show your ID just to get in our neighborhood because people are trying to loot, you yeah. know? Uh, so they wouldn't allow anybody in um, walking or uh, with cars, unless you lived in that neighborhood or knew somebody in that neighborhood. And they would actually uh, come to your house and be like, look, there's somebody 
trying to come to the neighborhood. Do you know this person? And you're like, yes. <laughs> and then they would allow them in. It was, but like I said, you go a block away and it looked like it's just Saturday. Everybody's fine. Uh, nobody else is going through this. It was just like our two neighborhoods. Um, I think, like I said, if you go on YouTube, the, the, there's an actual video of that water spout that hit my neighborhood because it was pretty big. Um, and people were filming it off those bridges that I was telling you that uh, I was driving on during that hurricane. They were actually filming it from those bridges. Yeah, it's... No more hurricanes. Let's knock on wood on that. Well, we've been lucky. We, we missed a couple... Uh, the past few years, but is it is it better? In a, I mean, I know hurricanes are hurricane, but since you're not right on the water, or oh, you're not in Orlando anymore, are you? No, I'm in Daytona Beach, so I'm only oh, like <clears throat> I'm probably three to five miles from the beach. Oh, that's that's pretty close. That's close. Yep. That's pretty close. Um, yeah, you see, I wonder how it is in Orlando. Like, I mean, they're in the central, right? Central Florida, like right. Yeah, I, I I lived there in the '90s, and um, it's kind of into. There was this one big hurricane. I forget the name of it. And Andrew. No, that was the one that went actually hit the state in South Florida and ripped all the way across. Yeah, that one was rough. Yeah, and and that's you know. I, can't remember exactly when Andrew was, but I do know that it it made the building codes and stuff change. You know, they they finally got down to like, well, we need to you know do this and do that. Um, but anyway, there was this big one coming, and I I don't really pay attention to this stuff. You know, I mean, my neighbor there were a few people boarded up in the neighborhood and I talked to my neighbor and I said, Hey, his name was Pete. I was like, Pete, you, you going to board up or what? He goes, nah, he goes, I don't ever mess with that. And I'm like, yeah. All right. I said, I, I don't know. I said, I see people boarding up and I said, I just heard about this thing, which I literally did, you know, and it, it was still a couple days away and it, it just, it was out there and it was still coming, you know, and uh, again, I, this was back before I guess the weather channel and the other stations realized that they could make a lot of money by causing a lot of panic with people. Yeah. That tends to be the way they do things now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd lived in Florida my whole life and never been through like a really that I could remember. I mean, I think Dorothy was a hurricane when I was like two or three years old. That's kind of funny, Dorothy. Uh, but it's a hurricane, not a tornado. Right. And uh, so, you know, I was like, all right, yeah, Pete's not going to board up. So I, I'd i never boarded up before anyway. So the day that it's like, it's, it's, you know, the day before it's supposed to hit, it's really, you know, it's looking bad. And it's like, it's still coming. It hasn't changed direction or anything. And of course, you know, I, on the news, they're showing, you know, there's no plywood left or anything. And so I go outside cause we had the community mailbox in this neighborhood just to make it easier on the mailman, you know, no door to door delivery. And I, I go out and I noticed that Pete's house is boarded up. <laughs> I'm like, what's up with that? And then I get a call from, uh, my mom and my sisters and uh they're like we need to come over and stay at your place because we're too close to the coast and i'm like okay i said that's not a problem i said if i said but from the looks of this thing and it did it 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 would have covered florida like you know huge yeah izzy what's up my man how you doing um, yeah, so they came over and I'm like, well, I had duct tape on the windows, like, you know, in, in X's, that's all I could do. That's all I had. You know? 
And I, I, I literally just said, well, I guess we can all die together because if this thing hits the state, look at it, it's going to cover us. And believe it or not, sometime around like 1, 1 1.30, 2 a.m., it literally, just before it was about to hit, took a 90-degree turn and went up to the Carolinas, I think. Yeah, see, oh. that's the thing about hurricanes, right? They're super unpredictable. I know. Uh, I'm trying to clean my... I noticed it got blurry. Like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, it, uh, yeah, a little bit. But that's another thing is... Uh, uh, Yeah, I don't know. I was trying to like Yeah, to like refocus it. Yeah, but it's not doing anything. Do you do you ever go in on your computer before and, and turn the autofocus off? No, I didn't do anything. I just plugged okay. it in. Yeah, I always turn that autofocus off because for artwork it's not that good to have on. I think for if you're doing a face thing, you know, it it's okay, but well, I will adjust that uh, next time. Yeah. Like I said, I had a camera before. It was just a cheapy, like, $15 camera. And, mm -hmm. it, it, well, of course, it died. It overheated. and uh, Really? Wow. Yeah, it got it got so hot. It, it Like, it happens with, uh, like, routers and stuff where they get so hot, they just shut off. Um, well, routers are notorious for lasting about a year, year and a half anyway, right? Uh, it's, it matters. It matters what, what you're doing with it and also, like, what brand it is. Some brands are really cheaply made. But then they're, like, if you're running, if you're streaming constantly and, like, you're really working that thing, yeah. But, if, like, not everybody works stuff quite as hard as other people. Like, some people, like, you stream, if you stream... Um, and like, like stream is in watching and upload and download, like it's really working it on both ends. Um, uh, it, it, it has a shelf life, you know, it just can't take it after a while. It, right. it, sometimes the logs fill and all it takes is a reboot to clear those logs, like error logs, um, like, because there's collisions and stuff you don't know about going on inside of your your switch and your router, um, and they and the thing logs everything. Uh, so if those logs fill, then it starts to bog it down and it becomes an issue. So usually, that's why a lot of times when you troubleshoot with uh, I the, the IT department, the first thing they say, Did, can you reboot your router? Um, Sometimes that fixes it because it clears the logs or uh, sometimes there's so many errors that it needs to be rebooted. Uh, um, but yeah, it, that's the main reason why you have to reboot uh, when you talk to your help desk. So they're not doing it to piss you off. <laughs> I usually just tell them, yeah, I already tried that. Yeah, you make sure you. But most of the time, they. I know when I was working IT, I'd be like, "Okay, I know you did it, but let, let's do it right now." Uh, <laughs> like, because I just don't trust people, because uh, I knew they just didn't feel like doing it, um, which is odd to me, because all you have to do is hit the button. Uh, depends on depends on where that router is, though. Yeah, <laughs> you, I mean, you could you could even unplug it. Um, right. Yep. Uh, sometimes that's easier. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, those people like I always like I always make it easy to get to mine. Um, just because like I know I'm gonna have to, to get to it. It's like when you go into your refrigerator, you don't put the items that you touch often way in the back, you know, right? Yeah, um, or something that's important that you know you have to get to. Um, you don't put that way in the back. My wife does that to me all the time. 
every time I try and get butter or, or condiment, it's always stuffed way in the bag. I'm like, who does this? <laughs> <laughs> like, we, like you put the stuff we never touch in the back. Uh, but now that stuff's always up front, and I can't, and I move it, and I don't know why it keeps in. It ends up in the front again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like one of those things when you're married for 20 years you just go yeah that's just the way things are just giving you a little refrigerator exercise yeah, that's coming up actually I, my 20th anniversary is on August 12th wow uh, yeah we're actually talking to my kids about that like because his friends were asking a lot of questions about how long we knew each other and all that stuff and i was like man we've known each other i've known my wife since she was 13 i was 16 so um i was dating her cousin <laughs> uh, her cousin was living with her uh she was 16 as well um, she may have been a, a couple months older. And he, when you're 16, a couple months is like, whoa, older woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, so if you had a good cigar lately, Drew. Yes, I've had a lot of good cigars lately. Um, I had a Davidoff late hour uh in Churchill size. Uh, it's a Winston Churchill late hour by Davidoff. It's, I actually got a really good deal on it because they're usually 20 bucks a piece. Yeah. Uh, which is, I mean, I don't spend that much on cigars, but I was able to procure three for $38. Um, well, there you go. Uh, so yeah, I was like, man, I can't pass that up. Like that's, uh, and then uh, you know the thing was, I, and the whole my whole motivation in buying it is so I could have one with my friend. Uh, so I, you know, I got three, and I knew I was going to smoke two right off the bat, one for him and one for me. Um, and then I kept one uh, to age, um, just to see how it tastes, like maybe a couple years from now. Will that affect tobacco like that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it gets it smooths out and it's better. Not all cigars are created equal. Um, I've aged a cigar six years and it was way better when I had it when it was new. Um, then also I've aged cigars six years and had it and it was phenomenal when I hated it before. Uh, so uh, all tobacco and all cigars are not created equal. I don't know. Like, I know people who say shit like this. They go, uh, oh, man, this cigar, man, this thing would this would improve with age. And I'm like, <laughs> how do you know? Like, how did how, like, I don't understand. And no one could ever tell me. They just know. Like, this one, will, a, uh, Cubans tend to do that. Like, I have a few Cubans, and uh, people tell me the Cubans age well. Um but like why i don't know i don't know i don't know like I, i've been i just experiment in aged cigars and some come out awesome and some are uh, okay um um i actually had one that i aged for four or five years and i, I hated it to be honest when i first had it um that's probably why i let it age because i was just like i, I have like 10 of them. Uh, I smoked two and ha absolutely hated them. Um, and then I let them sit for four to six years. And, <laughs> and I was just out of, out of nowhere. I just went, eh, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. And man, it was wonderful. It tasted like, uh, like I was smoking milk chocolate. Um, wow. yeah, it was delicious. Uh, I was like, wow. And it even smell, it smelled like, um, uh, King Spirit roasted marshmallows. Um, yeah, roasted marshmallows. I was like, man, it smells good, it tastes good, but man, it was a sh it was just god awful before. Um, they're gone now because after that, I was like, well, you know, 
I got to finish these things. Wow. Uh, yeah, because if they go too long, they might revert yeah. back. Be horrible, right? Well, they have those pre-embargo Cubans. Mm -hmm. um, and I know in, in New York at the Havana Club, they have like, you know, 1967, 1969 Cubans, like still in box, like, um, and I believe they still like you can still buy one. I, if I remember correctly, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger smokes them sometimes, um, and they're upwards to a hundred plus dollars each. Uh, and if you think about that, you know, yeah, it's like wrapping a hundred dollar bill up and just lighting it. Yeah, I mean, and like, and I, it may be more than that because I, I from what I remember, I thought those like a box of those. They come in a, a wrap of fifty or something, and I think they're like thirty, forty thousand dollars for a box. Mm -hmm. It's like something crazy like that. Now that would never happen. Now the reason why that's so expensive, they're pre-embargo. Like right. they're also like what, fifth, almost sixty years old. Yeah, and they were well, you know, they were kept in a cabinet, which was uh, which they bought from the company who made the cigars. I think it's H. Upman. Uh, from Cuba, so they're these big wooden cabinets that look like uh really nice chest of drawers almost, and, and they they're just full of cigars. Um, uh, I imagine it smells wonderful. Uh, oh, congr congratulations to you, uh, Craig, 40th anniversary. Wow. <laughs> I feel like lately, like when people uh, of my generation, at least, there's not a lot of people I know who are either they're usually not married at all or they, they haven't been married that long. Uh, when I tell them 20, they're just like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, like, like I've achieved some uh, like crazy goal or something. Um, but then I hear Craig, he goes 40, and I'm like, geez. He just doubled you. Yeah, he did. That's awesome. It's actually pretty awesome um, to, to find somebody who will tolerate you for that long. Especially uh, Craig <laughs> with, it, with that Rocky fetish. Oh, he has all oh, the Rocky fetish? Dude, man, I went back on that. Like, <laughs> I... I I, I used to joke on Sylvester Stallone, but you know what? I was watching a bunch of his movies lately, and, and I have an over-the-top shirt I wear all Oh, I hate time. that movie. That's God. like great. Oh, I it's horrible. It's, it's a horrible film. It makes no sense. Like It's, it's like a made-for-TV movie. They well, got you, it on the big screen. The, the, like, the thing is, is this guy Lincoln Hawk, right? He's gonna win an arm wrestling contest so he can get a new truck, <laughs> so him and his son can live in the truck. Right, and that makes more sense than him living with his super multi million dollar grandfather, who, <laughs> who you don't really know as a criminal or not, because he doesn't really, he doesn't really do any like he. There's no, there's nothing he does in that movie that says he's a criminal. He may be an <laughs> asshole, but he's no criminal. So, you know, it just makes sense that he goes with Lincoln Hall uh, because, you know, he's going to provide that life he needs in that truck. Uh, <laughs> 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 and to be honest, that kid is a jerk. Yes. Oh, but you know what? I love watching it. Uh, I, I own a Lincoln uh uh, over the top shirt that I wear way too much. Well, um, you know it, it, the 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 part about that. I I could I could forgive the shirt because it it's so cheesy. It's kind of a good shirt to wear, you know. Yeah. And the, I I gotta admit, I do like the name Lincoln Hawk. You know, that's that's a good name. It is a wonderful name. Uh, Good name for a character. Demolition Man, great movie. I love that movie. Um, yeah, I, I love the first three Rockies. Demolition Man. 
Um, I, that, like I said, you hit my real, uh, I haven't seen a bunch of the other silly ones, but I did see over the top, I think with Craig and I just, that one to me was just, you know, well, a waste of money. Uh, Cause well, we did see it in the theater. Um, he does a lot of great movies and, and it's like a uh, cop land is a good movie. Um, I really like him in almost everything. Thermomo from the Train is a horrible movie. Uh, he didn't I, do that. Yeah, that movie sucks. That was Danny DeVito and somebody else. Thermomo from the Train. Oh, well, which one is his with his with the girl from Golden Girls? Stop or my mom will shoot. That's it. That movie's horrible. Yeah. Demolition yeah. Man, I, I think, if I remember correctly, was all right. Yeah, I love them. I watched it recently. Wesley Snipes plays a really good ass. Yeah. Like he 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 really nails it. And I, I like Wesley Snipes too. Yeah. Um, uh New Jack City. Um you know, Nino Brown. That's who he played in that. Uh what was the other one that's just like New Jack City? Uh Sugar God. Brown. No, God, I forget the name of it. Um, I'm gonna look it up, but I like Wesley Snipes movies too. Uh, he's a he's not a bad actor. I mean, is he a great? I mean, he's pretty good. Nothing. I I don't mind anything he's ever done. Now, Blade Three is pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Well, you uh, know, he probably just had to do it because, I mean. I think I saw the first Blade and it was good. I'm not sure about the second one, but yeah, I love the second one. You know when they? I, I'm not sure if I saw it, and I know I didn't see the third one. But you know when you're part of that franchise and they're throwing you money to do part three, it's like I guess you kind of gotta, even if it's bad and you know it's bad, you're like, well, they're gonna pay me. So oh, the second one is my favorite one. That was the one that um. Mike Mignola did all the designs for and Gil Gamero del Toro directed it. Nighthawks is a good movie, Dr. Kaz. Yes. Yes, indeed. Nighthawks is great. And uh, uh, maybe my favorite that Craig told me about is Paradise Alley. I don't remember Paradise Alley. I think Alley. that was after Rocky One or Rocky Two, or maybe right. I think it was more after Rocky One. Yeah, Sugar Hill. That was the Wesley Science. Sugar movie. Hill, yeah. I like that movie. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I've seen that one. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up though, because I do like 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 the more I delved into his catalog, uh, the the more I realized I actually like really enjoy his movies. Um, it's like me and Nick Cage, man. He, he's got a fan for life. That guy's ridiculous. <laughs> he makes horrible movies. Uh, but I don't know what it is about him that I like. It's just one of those things. Uh, um, I love his movies. Trying to remember the first movie I saw him in. It was that, well, I think it was a David Lynch movie. Uh, true, not True Romance. The Something. Lost Highway? Lost no. Highway with Lord Dern? It could have been. Maybe it was Lost Highway. He wears that leather jacket and he beats that guy to death. In the... And they keep talking about Wizard of Oz or something? Yeah, I think it's Lost Highway. Okay, yeah, that must be it then. And what was the one with the, the vampire one where he's like eating roaches? Uh, <laughs> um, God, I can't remember. I'm, uh, whenever I see a Nick Cage movie, I watch it. Like, it, it is it is a guilty pleasure. Um, I, I don't know why. And, and not to say they're good movies. I mean, that's I, why they're a guilty pleasure because it's well, like, like, it's like being like, Roadhouse. It's like that movie is so bad on so many levels, but so good on other levels. Um, yeah, I mean, you just enjoy everybody's like you had. This is the thing that. I've realized, and I tell people all the time, like we all like bad stuff. Like, oh, yeah. like it's all right. You're allowed to like it. it's not bad for you, 
But in general, to everybody else, it's horrible. But you're allowed to like it because you're it's you. Like you shouldn't feel bad for liking it. Like why? If you enjoy it, who cares? Yeah. Um, I, I like I, I never understand why people get so offended. They're like, what do you mean that's bad? Well, to me, I don't like it. Like um, there's tons of movies that people consider awesome that I'm just like, ah, it sucks. Right. <laughs> that movie isn't good. Like I can't like uh, what what the Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints. That movie, I I cannot stand that movie. Um and I didn't watch it for years. Like I want to say like 10 years cuz everybody built this movie up. Like all my friends were like Boondock Saints, man, Boondock Saints. You got to watch Boondock Saints and it got it was built up so much that I felt like it like it couldn't live up to that. Like it's already lost. Um, and then I watched it and I was like, this is horrible. What like it no I, I just but that movie has a, a cult following. You yeah, know? I I I actually enjoy the movie and the weird thing is I bought it in the cheap DVD uh, bin somewhere. Yeah. Just because I I don't know the the cover graphic or whatever looked kind of interesting, yeah. And it set it set around my house for probably a year and a half, and I didn't I never watched it. And then one night I was bored and I was looking for something to watch, and I was like, well, let me put this in for a few minutes. I only paid like I think four ninety nine or something for it. Well and, worth the four ninety nine. Yeah, and I was like, you know. That was a good movie, and this was back in the nineties. I, I don't yeah, even I watch did that movie like, actually get to the theaters and did yeah. it be that fast. Um, it did get into the theaters. Uh, I didn't see it in the theaters. Like I said, I watched it maybe three years ago. Okay, like I avoided watching it for God knows how long. Like whenever that movie came out, till two years ago. Uh, just because of that, like, oh, the uh, like the second part or the sequel or whatever. No, I watched the first one, yeah, but didn't they do a sequel? They did. I never even, I never even, I, it. I, yeah, I, I passed on that because I was like, mm, they're just gonna ruin it for me, yeah. I, I advise you though, you should watch uh, the second Blade movie, man. It's, it's really, it's really awesome, uh. The creature designs in that are pretty pretty great. Um, alone, and it has one of the guys from Boondock Saints in it. The the guy who plays uh, who's in The Walking Dead, Norman Reedus. Right, he's in it. Which I've never watched a single episode of. Yeah, you're not missing much. I know it. I I never was interested in the book, and I never. It was good at at first. Um, Actually, it was good for a little bit, man. It just kind of fell off for me. Uh, I still know people who watch. Well, I don't know if it's still on, but I and I don't even talk to people anymore, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but when I was talking to people, um, there's still people who love it, man. And that's like I said, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I love Big Trouble in Little China and almost everything uh, Kurt Russell does. I do too. That guy hits me just right. I don't know what it is. And then he does stuff like Tombstone, and you're like, what? <laughs> did you ever see that that cheesy movie he did, but he got in really good shape called Soldier? Yes. I like that movie. It is very cheesy. Yeah. Uh, I You know, only movie that I don't like Stargate as much. Um. I, I I don't think I would have watched it if he wasn't in it. Craig Zabla will tell you that I am Jack Burton. Oh, I love Jack Burton, man. Because <laughs> because you know I I guess I talk about myself like he did, you know. Oh, and and in what third person? Do. Yeah, like in third person. And With John someone Bacon banging your work. favorite head against the wall. Yeah. Yeah. What do I say? And, and John Beatty looked him in the yeah. <laughs> him in the eyes and said, 
The check's in the mail. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> or, or go ahead and do your best. Your best. Well, you know, in that movie, he never won a fight, right? Right. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I told every time I tell somebody that who who doesn't watch that movie a lot, I'm like, you realize that whole movie? I mean, he shoots the guy. anything. He never won anything. Yeah, only time he came through was when his reflexes and he, he kills David Lopan. But I mean, he shoots that one dude, but he feels horrible. He's just like, oh, I've shot people before, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's totally shocked like that, that it worked out for him, you know? But like, like man to man, he never won a fight in that movie, um, which is great. He's like the hero, but so not the hero. Right, he doesn't uh, realize, you know. Uh, I I wish they had done a sequel to that movie. You know what I always wished is that they made that T-shirt uh, with the Asian motif thing on it available for like purchase. I, I yeah, you can get that. Oh, can you? That's a yeah, cool yeah. shirt. But it's like a tank top, and I don't wear tank tops. Well, they could make it with sleeves. Yeah, they should. I'm an all sleeves guy, man. Like, uh, I mean, no, no, no disrespect, but you know, I, I'm a grown man. I like sleeves. I'm not joking. <laughs> I don't wear your four year old shirts. You don't want to show your guns, right? No, I haven't worn um, no sleeves since I was like five years old. Uh, and that was in uh, 1980. So um, I don't know. I know a lot of people who actually don't wear sleeves. Uh, it's just not my thing. I don't know. It always brings up in my head like me being five. Um, or you say brother a lot. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who used to say brother all the time. Um, and even though he said it normal, like, hey, brother. I would always hear it as brother, yeah. and, and I couldn't not hear it like that. Uh, oh, I don't know why, and he never said it like that. Like I'll admit, but my stupid brain hears it like that every time. Um, no, I get that. I, I I I feel you on that. You know, and in my head, I'm laughing and maybe crying a little. <laughs> Because I shouldn't be hearing it like that, but man, well, it's crazy what our brains do. It's ingrained in there. I mean, I actually visualize a man ripping his his tank top off every time I hear it. <laughs> Who would that man be? I don't know. Hulkamania? The the Hulkster man, and and I uh, I think my head may explode when that Hulk. Hogan um, biopic comes out um, that uh, Chris Hemsworth is playing Hulk Hogan. Right. And, you know, I have to go see that because Chris Hemsworth is a beautiful man. Oh, he is. He's a gorgeous and, man. And I, I have to go see that. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just one of those things. I'm like, God, I got to go see that guy. He, he is a beautiful person. You know what I, I haven't watched yet that I hope it's still on Netflix is the one he was in Extraction. I heard yeah, that. Yeah, that's cool. still on there. It's amazing. It's a it's a comic book. Uh, I have that book. Oh, is it? I yeah, it's from Oni. Um, it's I can't remember C U I A D. I think. Okay. It's been a long time. It's when I used to work for Oni, and they used to send me everything. I didn't know that. I. I I thought it was just a, uh, you know. No, uh, Andy Parks had something to do with it. Oh, nice. I remember correctly. Um, it's the name of the city that it takes place in. Uh, Suidad. Yeah, it's uh, Parks. Um, yeah, Andy Parks. And Joe Russo did it. And Anthony Russo. Uh, Fernando Leon Gonzalez drew it. I have the, um, well, it was only one graphic novel, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's really good. Um, but they're gonna make a sequel to it. 
Now, I don't, if I remember correctly, because this is a while ago when I had it a few years ago, I don't remember. I, I thought he, well, I'm not going to say. I don't yeah. know how they're going to do with Eagle. But uh, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And I actually gave the book to somebody because when I used to get those free comps, I would read them and then I would just give them to friends so they could read them or um, whatever, you know. Now, Zablo is saying that The Rock was originally scheduled to star. And I guess he's talking about the. Uh, uh, the Hulk Hogan, I, oh, I can't yeah. see that. I but I can't see that. Maybe the uh, the uh, Extraction movie. That movie is wonderful. Hey, I, I want to show you what I got a, a about a month ago, Drew. I didn't know they were doing these, and I know you'll be interested. I probably already have all of this material, but they're repacking repackaging it. And they're doing a very beautiful job. Um, if you have them, then you're 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 on top of it. Volume four comes out in October. There's your hint. Does that help you any? No, it doesn't at all. Okay. The oh color. yeah, I have that. Right, and I got the first three. And I love the the rounded corners they put on these. Yeah, I have the first one. I don't have the second one, but yes, I have the rounded corners. Yeah, and well, that's the way they come, and you know that could be problematic in shipping. But luckily, you know, well, mine. I, I, I did get one of those because I also have the other ones. Uh, right. Um, the collector and uh, yeah, but uh, I got one of those bent up. Um. And I called them at Amazon. Like, I actually talked to somebody, uh, and they sent me a new one. Oh yeah, they they and they let and me get the old one. The great thing is they've also they're in English, so now I can actually read the stories because they yeah. always looked interesting. I love oh, this framework. Like, look at that. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, you know the sad thing is is like that. Is such a niche market in American comics. Like, not everybody can draw like that here, and it would sell. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I I definitely know. But if you're in Europe, then that's gold. You know, like it's beautiful. Well, it should be gold everywhere. I just let I me mean, just you know this toad and this little elfin guy. It's beautiful. I I can just get you know I can start looking at his stuff and just get you lost. Know, yeah, I can just literally get lost and and then when I I do a drawing, I want to try to put all his texture, his use yeah. of negative shapes and and like like these bears here. Yeah, the way her hair goes in oh, and the compositions are amazing. Uh, it's mind blowing. Um, and they're, you know, and they're all like consciously made to, they're not just there to look cool. Yeah, no, he's. Um, there's like framing and storytelling involved in all his decisions. Uh, um, just beautiful work. But you know what I do to get away from having to want to do that? <laughs> uh, I actually copy his drawings. Yeah, no, I was actually going to get a moleskin sketchbook yeah. and just start filling it with copies of, like, um, some of his drawings and some of the way he uses negative space just to kind of start training my brain a little bit in, yeah. in, in that. I mean, I, you know, we all have it a little bit, but he's got it to such a degree that... Um, you know, it's just insane. I mean, look, this page here is just stellar. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. <laughs> look at that. I mean. Yeah, I have a sketchbook just for that. Like some I copy some of his panels. And right. some I just, I just, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll frame the panel and then darken in the, the comp like the framing that he uses, the silhouettes. I'll darken the I mean, silhouettes. Like this, Drew. Isn't this isn't this great? 
it's, this is like in the this is the contents page, you know. It's so minimal, but it's beautiful. Um, yeah, he's a wonderful artist. Uh, but if if you're, you know, they're they're only like twenty five bucks a piece too. Yeah, they're cheap, but and well, volume four will be able uh, will be available in October. Cool. So I have volume one and a, a, a bunch of his other books. I was actually, I think I just put volume two and three on my wish list on Amazon. Um, hey, Sean Risley, miss you too, man. I can't. Uh, I have a deal with my wife that 30 days out from my birthday, I'm not allowed to buy myself anything because I'm so hard to get gifts for. Right. Because I don't want a lot. Um I generally don't want a lot, so uh, whenever I want something, I just buy it because I gen like I said, I'm not a guy who wants a lot of stuff. Uh, so she has so many problems getting me things for like presents for birthdays and stuff that I made a deal with her 20 years ago that whenever a holiday that was a gift giving holiday was coming up, that neither one of us would purchase anything um for you know until after that holiday right uh, and that way um it's at least possible for her to get me something <laughs> yeah yeah um so hopefully she sees them in my wish list and and picks them up if she does it it doesn't matter i'll pick them up after <laughs> All right, so I'm probably going to wrap this up so I can get Jacob his lunch. What it's time? about one. Oh, it's close, not bad. close to it, yeah. And uh, so what I've just been doing is, like I said, tightening up these pencils so I can get to inking. I kind of, I did this one time before, and I kind of do the pyramid thing where I'll get this bottom row and then, you know, kind of just go up. I think, though, uh, this drawing board is not big enough for this paper. When I get, when I when <laughs> when I get to the top, I'm gonna have to work upside down. You know. Yeah. Sometimes but, that can be good. Huh? Sometimes working upside down can be good. Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm constantly turning the paper for my inking anyway. Um, you know, spinning it around to get the right uh, uh, direction of what feathering or, or brush stroke. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, that's one of the advantages of drawing pieces digitally. Sometimes uh -huh. is that you can mirror it, you know, right. And then you can see everything that's wrong with it <laughs> and then go back and like fix it. And you can just keep flipping it. Uh, and you can see like what's, what's off. Um, it's really easy to spot. Hey, does point. your, did, does your, uh, you have a who, who, Hewan? Hewan. Does it, does the surface of it have a little bit of texture so it's not so slippery? Yes. Is that something you put on or something it came with? Something it came with. You okay. can, they do sell, they do sell stuff if you want to make it smoother or rougher. Um, I think it's perfect. It's just fine. Um, no, because I I've actually tried to, you know what I can ink, digital ink on my iPad and Procreate, but when I go to draw, it's a little too slippery. Yeah, I don't. There's something with me and Procreate that just don't. We just don't mix. Uh, I I do all my stuff. I just I don't know what it is. My friend Mark loves it. It's like his favorite thing. Oh, I've seen people do incredible work in Procreate, but I, for me, I haven't made that transition to doing penciling in Procreate. If, like I said, if I have a pencil scan or something, I can put it in there and ink around and have fun, and uh, that's fine. But the the drawing, I I miss the feel of real paper, so I think I'm going to order. Uh, Ron has one on on his. It's it's called Paper Like. Yeah. And it gives you that little bit of tooth. And I have a 27-inch HUD or UHD Cintiq 
which I don't know if I can even set up in my home office now because I got about 30, 30 square feet I'm working with. Yeah. And I don't know if that actually has a textured surface or not, but if it's slick glass, I don't know if I'm going to like it. So uh, I have a companion, a Wacom companion, too. <laughs> and I will say I'm the opposite. I can pencil better on that because it's so slick. Uh, but I can't ink on it worth a damn because every time I try and feather, like for some reason, the last millimeter, I guess I I veer off tight, slightly, so it leaves these hooks. Yeah. Uh, but on the hue, and I, I have no problem with either. Um, and plus, I think I have a twenty-inch one. I think mm -hmm. it's a canvas twenty or twenty-two, but it was only like six hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, and it's a, I think it's Sweden or Switzerland. I think it's Sweden based company. I thought it was Chinese, uh, which didn't bother me. I, everything, I don't care as long as, long as it works well. As long as it works, yeah, yeah. But uh, it, 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 it's a. Uh, I tried to get a sponsorship through them. Um, they said they weren't doing that, so uh, it was disappointing. I was just like, not that I needed another one. I already have one. Um, but really, I just wanted to kind of represent the brand. But I think they saw it as me just trying to get free stuff. But I was like, man, I already own it. What are you going to, like, you're going to give me a second one that I'm just going to keep in a box? I, I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I thought also it might be a, a good way to, to travel a little bit. But right. this is before COVID. Yeah, uh, you know, it might be an opportunity to hit Europe off um, if I got a sponsorship deal with them. But uh, yeah, they said no. So uh, I did get to finish that Sleepwalker though. There you go. That's what I was. <laughs> I got these three to color today. Right. Nice. And then I got one, two, three to ink, which I'm really looking forward to this one, which I haven't shown online yet. But it's a uh, it's a Baron Blood. And, oh, yeah, uh, nice. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this half in shadow when I color it, and his eyes glowing yellow, but just like his arm and part of his wing sticking out in the light. Right. Um, like yeah, right here. You see it. There's like a yeah. It's just gonna yeah. be a hand in that. Uh, it's gonna look cool, I think. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. Well, you're gonna attempt it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna try. If I mess it up, it's a good thing I do the pencils digitally. I'll just do it again. Now, uh, is the silver surfer piece on that flannel gray and the other one on pearl? Yeah, felt gray. Felt gray. This, this is. I don't know what this one is. This is on. This that is like a, an oyster or pearl. They have a color that's. Well, yeah, it's on. It was in a sorted pack. Oh, okay. Uh, but I bought a big pack of felt gray. Um, yeah. So I have a bunch of this. I have a bunch of red too, because I, I I accidentally ordered a pack of that. Nice, but, nice. Uh, 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 the um, um rhino? yeah, nice rhino on the red. Yeah. Here, I still haven't mailed it because he hasn't paid yet. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Beauty. Yeah, I've been mailing them in top loaders. Um, it's been working out pretty good. Uh, no now, now, if you want to answer, you can. If you don't, uh, I just wanted to know: Did you finally get your rate up a little bit? Rate up from what? You from, mean my like from my commission rate? Yeah. No, I haven't. I I haven't done it yet. Um, uh, it, it's I don't know if I haven't changed it since January or February. Okay. I, I think that's when I upped it. But it, I mean, I think I upped it like on the smaller pieces, like ten dollars. Right. Um, on the larger pieces, uh, I think twenty five per thing because it is a lot more work. Like um, in, like one of your full figure. Yeah, the full figure eleven by seventeen right now, uh, in black and white. I think I'm doing for two hundred. Mm -hmm. And then with color, I can tell you actually. Let's look on my thing. Uh, Eleven by seventeen, full bodies two hundred with color. It's three. Um, 
Uh, but now I'm doing uh, 11 by 17 heads, uh, which I have one right here that somebody got. This is Killer Croc. Um, oh, yeah, I saw you post that. I didn't know that was 11 by 17 even. Yeah, it's huge. So, the, yeah, it's going to take a lot of ink. And I told him that, like, all them little crevices and stuff, uh, that's going to be fun. Because I did that Hellboy. Uh, do you remember that one, the red one? Yeah. Yeah, I still have that. I have to mail it. Because uh, the guy bought another piece. That's why I haven't mailed it yet. Where he, Didn't he have the full horns? and? Yeah, I, it's like a, that one's 11 by 17, too. Oh, um, what's your what's your eleven by seventeen headshot price, Drew? From from just uh, black and white to color, black and white eleven by seventeen head is seventy five with color one twenty five. I think it's a good deal. Yeah, I think so. Half bodies one fifty. Uh, add color is seventy five, so two twenty five for a half body. Um, which somebody bought two half body ones. Um. Uh, after that, Rhino he wants two red ones. One is Miles Morales, and the other one something red. <laughs> Someone yeah. red. I don't. I have it down, but I told him, you know, like I said, I'm I'm not taking payment up front. Right. Um. I uh, there's and plus like it lets me get the ones I owe like. These two on the left are ones I owe. Is that through the Kickstarter thing? Some of them. Uh, I'm almost done with all those, which is, God, man. Didn't you say you had close to 200 or was it close to 100 left? No, no, it was over 200. And that was at the beginning of the year. Yeah. <laughs> down to like 60. Maybe. Oh, that might be like the light at the end of the tunnel. Not really. <laughs> I was trying to make you feel uh, but these two are heroes, the one on the left. Um, I think uh, Lloyd, he's got a, a red skull that he paid for that I'm going to do this week. And uh, I don't know. I have a couple more. It's on a piece of paper. I have a – actually, it's a log book. I have, like, this big hotel log book where I put everything in. Um, but I want to say 90% of the ones I'm doing are – ones that people haven't paid for yet right um i guess not in this percentage you're seeing in front of you 66 percent of those are do you do you wait until the piece is done to ask for the money or when you start the piece is that no, when, when it's done uh, wow yeah when it's done i've only had a uh i want to say i've finished about 20 or 30 and i want to say four people haven't paid have they ghosted you or have they just replied and said, you know, um, can you hold it another week or two? One guy wasn't replying to me. And then I told him I was going to sell his pieces. And then he said, oh, and he gave me a bunch of reasons why he couldn't do it. And look, dude, I don't I I'm not a I'm not a leg breaker. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So. Like, if you have an excuse, all I appreciate is communication. Just He could have told me that a few weeks ago, right. and I'm good. Like, I would move on. I'd be like, okay, I'll hold them for you. It's fine. Well, he did that, and then a month passed. So at this point, it's been two months. And I was just like, look, dude. Like, And he gave me another excuse, but one of them was one he had already given me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like he forgot he had already told me that. Right. Uh, so I was like, look, I'm just going to sell them. Like, plus, like, if you can't afford them, just tell me. I'll sell them. And you can buy more later. I'm still here. Right. Like, like the thing is, my feelings aren't hurt. So, like, it's fine. I'll, I'll sell it. It's fine. Um, I did sell one of them already. One I, is still, I still have, but I haven't really pushed the fact. I figure I'll just put it in my con folder and somebody will buy it at a show. Um, the other two, uh, one guy, right when I see, he was just like, look, dude, I can't afford it, uh, you know, COVID, whatnot. And he was just straight with me, which I appreciated. I was like, cool, I'll just sell it. And I put it up for sale that day, and it, it sold. And one dude just didn't like it. He was just like, I don't like that. 
uh, I don't want it. And I was like, fine. So I sold it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And I sold that same day. So like, like, like I said, um, am I disappointed? Sure. But like, I don't live my life like on disappointment. So right. I just move on. Um, I feel like sometimes these guys don't reply or they feel like, like I'm going to be mad or something. <laughs> like, we don't know each other well enough for me to be mad at you. Like right. I can be disappointed, but then I just, it's like, whatever, man, you know, it happened. I'll move on. Uh, you, you know, I've been watching some of Neil's, uh, Neil Adams is uh, auctions and, you know, he, does a interest free payment plan and you just, you know, if you can't pay, of course he's in the thousand dollar commissions and yeah, I'm not that big. Yeah. But I mean, even if somebody, you know, say you got a hundred dollar commission and they're like, Hey, I could give you $30 this week, $30 next week, and then 60 in two weeks if you hold it, you know, and as long as they make those payments, I don't know. That might yeah. be, I worry about that. Like, I don't want any, like, I don't want you to have anything on me. I don't like that pressure. I, I get so sick of people like giving me $40 and thinking they own me. <laughs> uh, and it bothers me. That bothers me. That actually does make me mad. Uh, Cause it's $40 dude, or it's $80. I don't care if it's $6,000. Like, you can't make me feel less than because you gave me money. Like, like you own me. Uh, it, it makes me so angry and hey, people do it a lot. Life happens. You know, this yeah. piece I'm working on now, like I said, I should have probably been getting close to done on it if not done. But man, the stuff that, that popped up was just crazy. Yeah. I, I you know, I mean, like I said, I didn't Tuesday when I went to the grocery store, I didn't know I was going to spend the next three plus hours getting a tire on my car. Yeah. Well, you know, so it's not like I know about that. I thought I was doing great. I just replaced the floors in my house was awesome. Doing all this stuff. Thought I was getting ahead and the ceiling in my, one of my rooms is coming down. Yeah. And I got to fix that. It's like, that takes time and because I'm going to do it. Like, you know, so that's time I could be drawing and doing that, but I can't. But I mean, you tell this to people. Sometimes they don't want to hear it, John. Oh, I believe me. I know it. It's like you could tell them there's a death in the family and they're like, was, that's got nothing to do with my commission. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, it does, because I'm doing that. And it's like uh, I've got to deal with, you know, I've got to deal with the life here, not your, you know. Not your drawing of whoever. Fill in oh, the blank. Ron mentioned that Hulk versus Thin piece that guy didn't want. That guy blocked me, Ron. Yeah, you know what? Ron, I think Ron kind of regrets not jumping on that. But it was already oh, dude, I love that piece. I think it was already sold when you showed it. You said, I've already sold it again. Yeah, it sold almost immediately. That was a cool piece. I don't like to toot my own horn, but that one came out pretty good. Uh I was really happy with that piece. And when he was just like, no. And then he gave me all that art direction. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, wow, dude. Uh, and then he blocked me. So. <laughs> and, and, I, and it's like I told you, he did you a big favor. He did. He did me a big favor. Uh, the person who bought that Hulk versus. Uh, he got two piece, headshots. He did. Yeah, I was gonna say that he bought. He's just like I like I that. that. Then he told me he never bought more than one piece from anybody before. Yeah, but I he, hate that when people are like, "I need a piece by you for my collection," because you know, you know, that's gonna be it. You know, they're like, "Yeah, they want one piece." Oh, I, dude, I, I'm, I've been really lucky lately. I've had uh, a few uh, clients, and I want to say friends now because we've talked so much. Talk to them more than my real friends. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, so they, they're they actually building, like, they have, like, this one guy, he just wants Spider-Man villains. And he buys three headshots at a time. Mm -hmm. So he's got six now. 
Uh, and he's already got the next three planned, which I have to start. Uh, but I told him I can't bump him up. There's other people waiting, you know. But I, I will. But he gets that, and um, I have a bunch of people now who are doing that. Like they're like they like tell me they have a, a um. I just reading what Rod said. <laughs> <laughs> they like took my train of thought, but they they're like building a portfolio of my own work. I'm like that's crazy because I don't have a portfolio of my own work. Uh, <laughs> you got, you have a digital portfolio of all the scans you make. <laughs> I do. I have. Uh, well, no, the digital pencils are great. Um, no, I mean the finished stuff. You scan all that too, don't you? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, not always, sometimes. If it's a piece I really love, I do. Uh, if I feel like I can sell it. Um, I don't marry myself to my art very much. Uh, but the sad thing is that some of my favorite pieces are Hellboy pieces. Mm -hmm. And I won't sell prints of that because I respect that guy too much. Yeah, Mignola doesn't like that either. Cause I, yeah, I know. I asked him. I actually had a, a good drawing, and I wanted to make a print, but I I sent him a I sent him the picture, and I sent it on Messenger, and he said, "I don't mind when people do commissions. That's fine, but you know, he goes, I really don't appreciate people making prints." Yeah, I think he said the same thing to me. Yeah, he was like, uh, "Well, one, you don't represent the character as I would want it represented, and that makes sense." Like, right. Uh, and two, you know, it's not something he approved anyway, like the imagery. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, you know, totally fine. Like, totally valid. Like, uh, he owns it. You know, right. it's not like Marvel, they don't care. DC doesn't care. As long as you put their little copyright thing on there, I heard they're fine with the prints. Uh, as long as you put their Marvel or DC copyright on it. Believe me, if they were going to crack down on it, it would have happened years ago. Yeah, I know, but I just, uh, uh, it wasn't that long ago they put out a thing to the artist. Uh, at least one of my friends, he got a thing saying, just do this and we're fine. I never yeah. saw it. So Yeah, he uh, he got him and a few others. They they got a, a an email saying, look, we don't mind you selling these, but just put our copyright on it and we don't care. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. That but that's very gracious. Like But it should be copyright on the characters, not on the artwork. No, not on the artwork, the characters. Characters on I mean they think they gave them what to say uh on there. Right. Like if you're doing uh, a Captain America, you know, Captain America copyright Marvel comics. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Something like that, or yeah. Um and I, I was like, that's very agreeable. That's very reasonable. It is, yeah, it is. Because I mean, it, they it, obviously it, it, know it. The license fee. Yeah, uh, they obviously know you're doing it. They could sue you. Uh, so it's really nice of them to just to be like, "Look, man, do this, and we're good." Uh, I, I'm sure they didn't say it like that. It's probably very legal. Uh, you know, had a lot of legal ease in there. I, I just am the layman, so that's how I'm going to say it. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna jump in and say goodbye. I got a hungry little boy that I gotta feed. Yeah, I've got to go to Lowe's and buy safety goggles so I can rip my ceiling down. <laughs> oh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck on that, and good, good having you on again. We'll have to, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, I got more to ink, so you, you should. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back on either this afternoon or tonight, but. I, I I need somebody to do the chat, and Ron doesn't like to take up a slot so he can read chat because he thinks it's taken away from the art, which I understand that too. But you know, there I, I got no other got no other way to do it. You have no recourse, right? It's no, like I'm I'm stuck between you know Ron and his ego not wanting to. <laughs> I got to put that in there. Ron and his ego not wanting to show his uh, avatar. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think the 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 chat, like what Ron does, adds to the whole experience. Well, you know, we can't. I can't. If I'm just reading it, it does me no good to 
just read a chat and answer it. I want to work and answer at the same time. Well, I also miss most of it. I, I know. And that's the thing is it, it you know. Um, but uh, like I said, this is your show, man. You you force Ron to do it. You force him now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he'll do it. He just doesn't like the idea that, you it know, when I, have another artist, when I have another artist on that he's taking up a third of the area that the artwork could be displayed. And I'm like, but it's kind of important to I don't hear. Think, as long as the artist doesn't care, it, I don't think it matters. It doesn't bother me. Does it bother you, Drew? No. And if it doesn't bother the people, I haven't heard anybody complain about it. So No, if somebody wants me to switch the camera view real quick to a, a full shot of your board or my board, I would do it, you know? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Like, it could be like, hey, can we take a look at John's drawing? And then you could just do it from your view for a little bit. That's a great idea. Why That, sh that should be an option. We should, uh, next time you do it, uh, you should you should express that in before. Like, hey, if anybody wants to look at so-and-so's work, let me know and I'll switch between us. Uh because I don't think that option has like been has been broached, you know. Like we haven't approached that op that option. Oh, there's, there's like okay, you know, you can do this thing where oh, I know, like that. There's that. You can do this. Oh, I can see the differences now. You can do this in the cover, new and old. You can do that, and this is like you know, this is now. And then if I wanted to, I could do you. There's your whole desk. Yeah. You know, there's my whole desk. So you should you should uh, just bring that up next time because I really feel like Ron or uh, somebody who's moderating uh, does add to it because I I don't I have this weird thing where I feel like I'm being rude, uh, not answering people. Yeah, uh, I do too. That's why I you know when I'm not drawing, people get. You know, like, and and I'm on here to work and talk, but I can't do both. Yeah. I mean, I can if it's a smaller audience and I'm telling people in advance, hey, I'm just going to ignore you. So don't ask questions. And I feel that's extremely rude. Yes. Um, but in the same sense, if you express it, at, like, I can't read chat and draw like. Um, that is one thing I can't do. I can't read it because it breaks my right. My that, that's process, and, and that's why I was telling Ron it's okay if he takes up a little bit of area. Uh, it, it's if, just too if hard. Somebody says, "Hey, can you zoom in on one somebody's work?" Then all he's got to do is tell me that, and I'll reach over and click my mouse and zoom in for a few seconds. Yeah. Also, maybe people also think like, "Hey, I don't want to be rude and." Like force him to to do that, but I think if you tell people it's okay to do that, like right from the start, or if you bring it up, like, hey, you know, do you, does anybody want to check out what uh, John's doing? Then then we can just. Uh, I don't think that's a problem, right? Like it. it no, I I you know this is for fun. This is to like uh, have a chat with the fans, uh, with friends. Um, well, for me it's fan. I think I have one really good one. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> You know who you are, Steve. So, you know, I don't know what time I'm 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 going to like I said I got to go make some lunch. Uh I'll probably work on this some more. I don't know if it'll be inking or some more penciling um or both. And then sometime I got to pick my wife up at work sometime between 3.30 and probably quarter four. Man, and a full day, sir. Yeah, well, see, I'm the only driver. And, and my wife does complain that I never taught her to drive, which I didn't. And, you know, but. Uh, Did you tell her to shut up and just get to cooking? No. <laughs> Could could you tell her that? Because Ron and Ron and I are both scared of my wife. He's Filipino. Are you crazy? I'm not trying to get stabbed. <laughs> my, my wife is also Filipino. She what she likes to do when I do stuff like that. 
and mid in mid sentence she'll put her hand on on my lips and like rub her hand on my lips which i hate cuz i think that's <laughs> disgusting but it gets me it stops me from talking dr kaz is back saying can't can't chew gum and drew pun you know get the pun see it's on the board there dude oh uh, man i'm glad you're a doctor <laughs> it's not a comedian <laughs> Well, he did say draw, and then he 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 changed it to Drew with the pun. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like puns. I had a I worked in this comic book store, and uh, we used to do like days where we just do puns all day. And I remember the worst one I ever heard was uh, you remember that basketball player Sean Kemp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we it was during that time in the nineties. And uh, he walks up to me with the Sports Illustrated cover. And he goes, you know why his shirt's tucked in? And I was like, yeah, because it doesn't he have to do that? And he goes, no, because then he'd be unkempt. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, you, you. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. But it's amazing at the same time. All right. Well, I am going to, again, get to – my son's lunch. Get me a little something, and if uh, I'll, I, whenever I get it figured out, Drew, I'll just either send you a text or an invite, and if you can pop in, I probably can. Tell tell, tell Ron it's okay for him to take up a, a portion. He knows. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Doctor Kaz. I I was just joking. I like puns. <laughs> um, yeah, he can do it. I think it's a good idea, actually. If as long as we're like uh. Um, I think if we're proactive and just mentioning it, it shouldn't be a problem, you know. No, like, I, I, I think your solution is the best. There, that's another job for Ron. He can also say, if you're interested in a close up, you know, yeah, just open your fat face. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a fat face too, so it's all right. So does my dog. <laughs> That's why you got that dog. Yeah, I call him Fat Face. I love Thank him. Thank you, Dr. Kaz. All right, I'm going to say hasta la vista. And Drew's going to say goodbye. And we will see you maybe later on tonight. So that's it for now. See ya.